Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Immortal Break the Game Alpha number 28. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. Joined today by ZK. How's it going, ZK? Pretty good, pretty good. Excited to get back to 1v1. It's going to be an exciting mm -hmm. tournament. A lot of exciting players this week. So really curious to see who's going to take it all this time around. Yeah, we actually have quite a few players this week having added in, well, Swamp Stag, the unknown, and King Kiko, also known as Mr. Cream, our Golden Tigger. Been in a few times. Alongside yeah. several regulars. So we're starting yeah. today with Skix against Swamp Stag. And they are already in, so we can get right to it. Yep. We can look what inside. do you know about these players? Well, we look at the names on the map. It's Seamus. So one of the developers in the game, he's our esports manager. Um, so, you know, he's all about those esports. He knows how to handle that and wants it to go well. On the other side, we have Skix, who just uh, who hasn't played in a little bit. He just uh, recently came back to the game, so I'm curious what type of strategies he's used to, as uh, he hasn't played all that much since the economy changes came in. Yeah, they've... Well, yeah, they haven't really had a chance to have a faster game plan, but they also haven't had a chance to have the more recent changes, which detect changes. That means that, well, they're playing it, they're playing it pretty well. It seems like they've they practiced a bit. They're going for some early tech one. They're trying to make sure they've got... They have a solid setup into the mid game with protection because yeah these days both like every any player is gonna have to be focused on that you know early infantry game if they want to stay in yeah just the nature of the nature of how it works yeah well this game is getting pretty spicy Playing already today, with by uh, ZK. john skicks already heading up for those uh for a lot of early units while simus went for the fast expand instead and that's well, I'm really curious to see how this plays out because with everything slowed down, like tech harder to get to, Skix does have a pretty wide window to start harassing and possibly even forcing a cancellation on this base if they really push it hard. And honestly, just getting the, the buildings at the front is enough damage to really not make it worth it, right? Depends what he decides to go Ooh. for next. If he wants to keep pushing more units or if he goes for... Oh, you know, if he goes for more units, or if he decides to expand behind it, is he going all in? Uh, so far, it's, it's just a lot of units with a lot of pyre. He's getting ready to attack That's those... All. Uh, yes. It's all. A lot of units, yep. a lot of pyre often means you're rushing in with Bone Stalker, summoning Zol, and then using that for extra damage. Yeah. So and, we've and seen it, that all the time before. Oh, yeah, and that's a lot of damage coming Seamus's way, so we'll have to see how he defends this. He's going to have to be on the defensive. Well, okay. He has to have a ground, though. One thing that's really worth noting here, between the Tower Foundations and the Legion Halls, there are a ton of choke points that Seamus has built up right outside their natural. Oh, definitely. So for a melee-focused for a melee focused immortal like Orzum, it is going to be a much easier time going through or defending at the Legion Halls than it would be trying to defend out in the open. Which means if Skix is able to get these Antari from behind, it's going to work out really well for them. So it's, it's a question of timing. Yeah, so far he's not really in position. Simu's coming out to intercept. Uh, Skix behind is finally getting his expansion down, so it's not completely all in. He has a lot of units. He got most of the power on the map. And Shamo's behind it. Just used it to uh, get a better defense up and running at his natural. He'll put down a tower once he can afford it. Uh, but until then, he's pretty well He's pretty well set up to defend any type of pressure. Skick's looking much more for map control, you're right. They're not... Uh, they aren't really trying to contest that defense at the moment. I'm... No, yeah, well, so let's, let's keep an eye on it. It's... I mean, Simus does have the economic advantage. They did expand first, and that means Skix is still kind of on the hook to actually, you know, make something happen. Yeah, he definitely wants something to happen right now. He's finally heading in, has a teapot first to make sure he doesn't get trapped. Centauri's aren't here, but they're on their way back. And can he get any kills at all? He's, uh, he's even summoned Zol. Magi goes down right away. So Skix, we'll get Zol on the mall. Gets a flank on the Centauri. Zol being as an as awesome distraction as the rest of the Bone Stalkers come in. Wipe out half the Centauri, seems as a setup. The rest of the Bone Stalkers able to slow down some of the defensive progress. Skix? They've gotten a material win. Yeah, well, if you look at it this way, he's going to try and keep doing a bit more damage, but was it enough to get back from the economical def deficit that he's had from the start of the game? Simus lost some units, but so did Skix, and just having the economy means Simus can afford to lose those units just a bit more than his opponent. Perhaps. Skix did lose Zol as the main loss up to this point, which that's a summoned unit. Yeah. I mean, they could well, actually, they could resummon Zol right now. I have enough power to do so. 
Do you think he lost about maybe five, six Bone Stalkers as well to compare? Seamus did lose more units. A Magi, well. For a Magi and through for Zantari? I think that's yeah, a exactly. pretty even trade. Yeah, exactly. So that generally advantages the Orzum player as he expanded first. Getting that extra economy up and running really puts him in a good position. So now Seamus just has to, you know, take advantage of that. Skakes needs another way to cause pressure or find some other advantage if he really wants to get back in this game. I'd call Seamus just slightly ahead from this these early exchanges. I'm... Yeah, I'm tentatively going to agree. That is that is a that is a scary Zentari force that Seamus is maneuvering around the map. I've honestly got to give Six credit, though. The fact that they got rid of the Magi means that this Zentari force can't just roll up on Skix's base, have hallowed ground, and start getting full range damage. Okay. Heck-wise, Skix is moving up to Amber Room, so he can get uh, into those resonance. That's it's that type of army he wants. It's a pretty traditional army, a good old meat and potato army. Getting those resonance with the bone stalkers too. Oh, that Help is traditional. Finish. That's that's uh that's an old tradition. We haven't seen resonance used in a long time. Well, that's true. They kind of fell out of favor because, well, honestly, they were underperforming. Yeah, but they've been there's a bunch of changes. Well. Hey, but Skix hasn't played in a while, right? So that means they Skix haven't. Back and, and honestly, there's a lot of changes that have happened to the game since. Resonance yeah. might have more of a place than we realize. Exactly. Like it's not going immediately to air units. That's the thing. It's yeah. the game. The game just isn't as the tech doesn't get produced as quickly. Seamus will not be as able to as quickly build up air units in response. Definitely, Seamus behind us playing it pretty slowly, going for Soul Foundry after getting the monastery as he has to, and yeah, just yep. content playing it defensively, which is a fine choice. He doesn't need to. He has the early advantage, just getting the extra base up and running. Seamus is playing the Orzum the Orzum way. Hold back, stay behind towers, and wait until your opponent breaks themselves against you. Mm, yes. The beautiful, the beautiful time where someone just juiced himself against your meat grinder. <laughs> that is a visceral image. Mm. Mm -hmm. How else are you going to make me grind meat, right? You just get a few bone stalkers in there, have it, even have toothpicks with you to help help it out. And, ooh, a small I mean, it's, it's vegetarian. <laughs> Are Zentari vegetarian though? No, no, no. no. The Bones Talkers are. No, oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh, well, well Seema was about to look and try to eat their vegetables, but really not not too concerned to get in there. At the same time, Skix going for the tower. Distraction by Zol was partially successful. Skix can lose so much of their force trying to take out this tower. Wisely retreating, but Seema's starting to get those advantages piling up. Yeah, Simo's been playing it so well, safely, defensively. Hasn't really lost a battle so far. This case always trying to push it, push some type of fight, trying to get an advantage. And here comes the meat I was talking about. Oh, okay. To go with all the veggies that we we're talking about, all Actually, these little. Uh... Oh, oh, is that a run by? I think it's a run by into Simo's base. Oh, you're right. Absolutely. There we go. That's what Skix has been looking for. Getting some econo like, getting some mining time damage. Hmm. And if nothing else, forcing Seamus all the way back, giving Skix back the map control he so desires. Also, look how much Skix is able to see. Like, they they, they know exactly what Seamus is up to now. Yeah, heading up to that Angelarum and a second Soul Foundry. So Seamus getting up a, a strong defensive army still. Nothing yet. Like, nothing to harass too far. Maybe some Dervish might come out. But uh, he seems content in his strong position right now, just... Some basic units, some absolvers coming out too to control zones around this place. Really, the defensive play of Orzum. Oh yeah, absolutely. Both players also going for their thirds. They aren't really in a position to contest either one, so it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Now Skix, Skix is again going far more for the pyre. Simus is leaning heavily on the fact that Orzum will generate pyre automatically from towers. They have not been hunting for pyre anywhere near as aggressively as Skix has been, and that's. That's, I don't know. It, we'll see what happens because Skix has been getting the free Zul summons, but Seamus has been winning fights regardless. Yeah, Zul can be a game changer, but she won't always change a game. Uh, Skix finds a good place to attack while Seamus is a bit out of position. Seamus is coming in as fast as he can. What can get ah, Empire Broken nice. comes down. Empire and Broken comes in. Skix looking to go around the choke point, but not able to get rid of any of it. Seamus. Fire like just completely converges down and forces Skix out. There's I, another another solid defense from Simus. Simus is playing this expertly. 
And even has a Sentinel ready for those Frums, so the Frums won't be able to do anything at all. At least there's only three. It's not the biggest investment. But man, uh, Skix wanted those to do a bit more than what they're going to accomplish at this point. Well, a bit of mining time once again. I mean, you know, here and there, my, some mining time damage, as long as you don't lose too many units in the process, is still worth it. Seamus has not actually damaged Skix's economy. We're getting to the point of the game where that early game advantage just isn't mattering as much unless... Skix throws all the units away to take care of the Ancient, which seems dangerously likely. Oh, it's going to be so close. Who are they attacking each other? Well, nope. Zal summoned once again. Skix spends Pyre for Pyre, but does get it. Seamus coming in on the choke point. Skix not well enough positioned. Resonant is going to go down. Seamus continuing the pressure, realizing they've got, they have the army advantage coming through here. Skix trying to set up the resonance. It's not nearly enough to keep Seamus completely at bay, but it is enough to at least slow things down. Seamus yes. going for the tower instead. Oh, a good one for Seamus. That's a that's a nice terror control we can gain. And Skix won't let it stand. He's coming in from the back and too little too late. <laughs> Skix's army just is not well equipped enough to deal with this. And unfortunately, they're a little late on some of the expansions and their tech is falling behind. Even with the bone stargers as it is, it's just not enough. Zol summoned once again. Skix. He is actually get a, able to get a decent Zol shot, but simply not lasting long enough. This stage in the game, you want Zol around, and Seamus instead getting the surround on their end. Cutting Skix's army in half. And hardly losing anything in the process. Skix down to only two more residents left. Bone stargers are dealing some damage, but it's simply not enough. As even with the reinforcements coming in, Simus is able to clean up Skix's army. And there's nothing left to defend. Simus is everything wide open. Yeah, Skix's reinforcement coming a bit quicker, but is it enough? Simus' army is still powerful here. He lost a lot of units, but a big bulk of it is still here. Although he did lose most of his entire frontlining force. Uh, oh, but reinforcements are on the way. And not a whole lot these Bone Stalkers can do right now. They're, they're trying. Dealing some damage, got rid of one of the scepters at the very least. Simus still has a significant amount of firepower coming through here, and the reinforcements have arrived. Simus, they've got this expansion. That this expansion is going down. Oh man, losing the natural at this stage of the game, it's a pretty dangerous proposition. Only two bases to free. Simus reinforcement still coming. Army advantage completely in Simus side. Dix, uh, sorry buddy, but I, I don't think this is going to be your game. Not with Seamus coming in some Dervish as well. That that just checkmates everything Seamus, or that Skix has built up. There it is. Seamus takes game one. Mm. It is best of three, so Seamus still needs another win. Skix still has a time to come back. He can uh, he can come back and win the next two. I'm yeah. confident. To, he showed some nice things. I'd like him to be a bit more uh, decisive at times. Sometimes yeah. he decided to retreat at the right time, which is... Often a mistake we see with some of our newer players. And Skix shows experience there. Retreats before taking way too much damage. Which I appreciate. I'm oh, yeah. curious to see what Skix does in terms of tech in the next game. That they had a solid early game going and some decent pressure, but they didn't have anything to follow up. Not exactly. That, that's, often the, that's often the thing in, the, in these strategy games, right? You go step by step. So you have the first step, the Bone Stalker attack. Okay, what's your next step? You expand. Okay, how do you want to harass? How do you want to keep going? The Resident, perfect. Set up a timing attack with that. After three Resonance, you want to push, you want to attack the third. Mm. Okay, deny the third. Uh, he didn't quite have that game plan set up at, as well as we'd like. And, well, we got to give credit to Seamus, right? I don't think they researched Deploy. I'm not sure or either. They, did, they never used it. Yeah. Yeah, Deploy makes a big difference with those guys. Getting that AoE on their attacks. Oof. Yeah, I think if they had researched to play, we would have seen it in the Ancient fight, which could very well have turned things around. Yeah. Having that extra splash oh, yeah. damage. Yeah, yeah, splash damage is essential for uh, dealing with all those clumped up Zentari. Well, oh, we are going to be on Canyon for the second game. It's kind of a bigger map. It feels like a bigger map. Maybe not. It just feels bigger, I guess, because of the windy opening. I'd say, like, the... Like, often in these type of maps, we call it the, the Russians, like, natural-to-natural natural distance. Mm, and it probably yeah. is just a bit longer because of those, like, the direct path might be the same, but because of all those intertwining rocks that you'd have to destroy to get there, it, it takes a while, right? As you said, a long, snaky path in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, yeah. Not quite. We'll see, uh, 
we'll see how this one plays out. We'll, will Simus Orzum his way to victory again, just play defensive and... I mean, just let us last opponent. time. I yeah. think on this map, it's a little bit harder. There aren't as many choke points. Oh. I, the, and where there are, they're wider. Yeah, that's true. But Pretty we'll find out. Run. Yes, game two gets started with Skix in the Northwest playing as a Jari, changing it up, going for the Croft route as well. Well, on the bottom right, Simu stays as Orzum. So let's see what Skix has up his sleeve to defeat Orzum. Is there a better way to just uh, deal with those massive towers that Simu's lives to put on? As a Jari? I mean, if you have... Oh, there's not really a whole lot that's just direct damage. The best you have oh. really is just Arkham of the support. Well, you know what, I, what I've what i liked? I've seen some players like Lightforger, for example, use uh, Mass Wardens. It's always been a fun strategy, just oh, getting yeah. all the Wardens up, yep. getting around those defenses. Like, oh, you have Towers there? I'll just go around it because I can fly. I mean, that's also Lightforger, who will always go for Mass Wardens if they have the opportunity. Yeah, he's or been doing yeah. that a lot. He's been yeah. doing that a lot. Mass Warden, Mass Dervish, if they can get away with it, they will. Yeah. Well, this time around, both players playing very, very uh, economical. None of them going for those crazy, crazy all-ins. Unfortunately, no boring game. Oh, I do like this Amorism, right? Always placing his Legion Hall forward to get some Hallow Ground. Hallow Ground giving his units a bit of extra defense. Nice play from uh, from Seamus hmm. playing that out. Of course, makes it more vulnerable. Yeah, consistently at the same time. doing that too. It does. It does make it a little more vulnerable, and unlike Frontiers, doesn't produce as tight of a choke point. But, like you said, it means it's easier to defend. You throw the Centauri up with a hallowed ground. There's more room to have Super Centauri. Mm. We do love those Super Centauri. Uh, their little upgrade gets them up and well, running. Seamus certainly does. Oh, yeah. Blades of fire all over the place. Who wants normal blades? No, everyone wants energy blades. If you, if you can add flames on your sword, why wouldn't you? The question for the ages. Yeah, like, all those... fam like famous, famous medieval combat weapon in war is flaming swords. How accurate is that, actually? I'm not sure. It's like, I'm sure some people did it, but most I mean, people, you, it's you just dangerous. Like, I don't know. See, the problem isn't that it's dangerous. It's that, how would you set a sword on fire? Well, you put oil on it. Well, how long is that oil going to last? Right? Like, <laughs> it's probably stab. burn out pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention, yeah. you're swinging the sword around. Now you're, like, so as you well know, when you try to blow out fire, you kind of, like, blow on it. Now, granted, swinging it, it does give it more oxygen, but it also means that it's... You know, the fuel is kind of getting disconnected from the air. I don't know. In either case, it's not going to last long. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah. Uh, it, it is quite good. Uh, how does a I mean, sword... I guess you could wrap a damp, like an oil-soaked rags across your sword, but then it stops really being a, a sword. Yeah, then it's not dull anymore, right? It's just a it's, stick it's more of, of a, fire. It's more of a giant torch. And at the same time, if you put it on fire, that just means the sword can cut through things faster, right? Like a hot knife through mm. butter? Butter being uh, butter being the bones of your enemies. I don't. It's not that kind of hot, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think so. Cause uh, yeah, I honestly that's that's a really tough question, and I don't think anyone's bothered to set the sword on fire long enough to test. And yeah, that's probably not Pro why you set it on fire, right? Yeah. But, I mean, those Zentari probably do. Zentari put on fire just to scare their enemies. Like, oh, I'm gonna slice for you from a distance now. Yeah, but that just goes on fire magically. Like that's mm. the difference. That's that's magical yeah, angel fire in the it's inside cheating. of the sword. Centaurians are just a bunch of cheaters, yeah. actually. Oh yeah, yeah no, I like mean that. angels in general are cheaters. The laws yeah, of like, physics are not pleased. Yeah, you don't respect the do. laws of physics. Don't they understand what laws are? Laws are things you have to respect, and they're like, nah, we're gonna fire it up. <sighs> Dumb they make their own laws. They are the law. They make people respect the law of arrows and. At the end of the day, no one really does. At least not those plant people. They're not even the same world. They never heard of Aros. I, actually, they might have heard of Aros. It's like, oh yeah, he's that uh, guy that left a while back. So, oh, okay, cool. I guess we don't have to care about him. Exactly. You can mm -hmm. ignore that guy. Well, Aros or no, Skix setting up for... I say the pirates best they can. See was... Aren't they... Are they gunning for a pillar drop rush? I mean, neither player has really engaged the other at all this game. See, I'm like, mostly Skix curious. Been... Yes, yeah. Simu just hasn't put defensive towers like he usually, like he did last no, they game, at the least. They're they're building up, and that much pyre tells me they're building up for a pillar push. They just don't have a lot of Centauri. They're going for scepters once again. Is that like 
mid-game timing, scepter timing pillar push they're going for? Well, Roth has changed a bit, you know, like yeah. we are forced to get Zephyrs now. We're forced to get Zephyrs to get to the next levels, uh, but that doesn't mean you, that doesn't mean you'll get a lot of Zephyrs, so Antir might just oh, be sparse. Body block. Oh, well played, Skix. Mm. Those just, big fat guys just staying, keeping out of the way. Yep. Oh, is there... Yeah, here comes Skix nope. coming in for third. Oh, no! Um, so Seamus today oh, learned no, no. the problem Seamus, with having cats. Yeah. You should not keep kittens near your power switch. Because if the kitty clicks on it, uh, oh, power goes out. a lot. Okay. Yep. So we'll okay. probably head no, to Seamus next is, game. Seamus is seeding the game. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, that is that is a thing that happens sometimes. So how did Skix do it? That's the real question here. How did he get into Simo's hat to convince that cat <laughs> to do that? It's really, really a good trick from Skix. Just coming in and doing that. Man, some, some people go to all, all lengths to win this game. I mean, you can just, like, turn the power... <laughs> configure the power button to not do anything. Okay, so... I'm gonna go into game three. Seamus' map choice. <laughs> Ooh, lucky him. Kind of well, that was a was great like thing from Skix, right? Skix doesn't really stick to Ajari for the next game. It just went so well. Mm -hmm. It's a... Uh, Ajari well, just lost friend of Animals. Which is kind of similar to Canyon? Not really, no. But Pretty different. Well, for Skix, yeah, it might be good, big. right? He'll remember Lost Province more than the other maps. That's true. That is definitely a map they've practiced on it at some point. Yeah, I was going to ask if Lost Province is actually in the map pool, but hey, if Simu says it is, we're going to believe no, him. The way it works is that the first map has to be Canyon or Frontiers. Oh. But after that, when people are picking maps when they're the loser in the match, it could be any of them. Well, any of the multiplayer ones. Hmm. So, no, you can't just go into co-op, but any of, the, <laughs> any of the competitive ones. Yeah, co-op, and then whoever gets the victory screen first wins. Oh, that's a great way to win. Great, great way to get at it. I'm kind of Here's... excited to see what happens. Skix, or rather, Seamus had something clearly planned. Like, they did have some kind of push... I don't know if they're planning on going for the pyre for a pillar of that was just the kitten, but at the very least, the double Angelaria was probably intentional. We'd like to think Seamus knows what he's doing. That's uh, yeah, we would. Yep. You know, Seamus generally does. That's uh, that's why we have weekly tournaments and everything because Seamus is there to help to, to to make sure that happens. You gotta trust exactly. Him. Yeah. I think the other side of the bracket. Not sure if how Nadavoyer and Mr. Kareem are going. Judging by the ch discussions in chat, looks like it is one o Voyer. I kind of expected, like, a, I can remember the bracket is like, okay, if Voyer was third place versus, and then he's going against YJ Zell for the on the other semifinal. The winner of this match going against Santa, yep. and Sa Santa is definitely the favorite for this tournament without Magical here, and Santa having won the last non-Magical game tournament, I guess. If we take out the Alpha, which was won by Hydra, Santa's generally yep. in the top three. Usually. They're in the top three because they have have gotten a lot of second place. Yeah. Many, many, many second places. Oh, no, they did beat Magical. Those, when they got first place yep. in level one, they actually did beat Magical. Yep, they did. And he yeah, might... that wasn't just because Magical wasn't there. No. No, Magical played really well. And then since then, Santa decided, you know how the best way to beat Magical is? Cheesing him every time. And unfortunately, it hasn't worked out <laughs> so well. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the, that the logic there hasn't really borne out in practice, but you know, it's good good attempt. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's probably something he doesn't practice versus it's, it's like Magical and Santa are regular practice partners, so you're not gonna practice your cheese against Magical because well, we're also sitting. He know how to defend it. Magical kind of mm -hmm. knows how to defend most things, though. It's you can't yeah you can't really go in with the the shenanigans. Santa well, definitely does do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he definitely does, and he definitely can, will continue to do it. Should he keep doing it? Yeah, sure, it's entertaining. Why not? Well, we'll go for it. That being said, like you said before the start of the tournament, we could see Santa go for cheesy stuff because they figured no one's going to be able to counter it. Yeah, no one knows know. what to do against Maybe. it. Maybe. Yeah. Well, Santa's, well type, Santa's the type of person that loves cheese and loves making cheese out of weird ways. He'll make cheese out of uh, vegetables and aru, and aru vegetables. Mm. 
Our vegetables I mean, being plant-based cheeses themselves. are pretty normal. But, I mean, it's usually uh, nut-based cheeses like cashew or almond, gonna say. but, you know. Yeah. Similar idea. Nuts are kind of plants, right? Oh, the fruit of the plant, so kind I mean, of a they're, they're legumes in some cases. We need to ask biologists. Know, we didn't have to ask, we'd have to ask Santa. Apparently, yeah, because I am just lost. I have no idea. Oh, That's I, not no, my domain. We know what Santa said. If he wins, he wants an interview, so... Well, That's true. Yeah. We'll have to ask him that. So the important questions. How would you make cheese out of plants? And are those... And are, are those... Uh, are legumes plants or not? The questions we all want to know the answers to. I just noticed we're both wearing blue. That's it. That's oh, a yeah. change. Hey. That's a change. <laughs> blue is just the best color sometimes. Gets you up and running. Gets the game up and running. And Lost Province for the final map. You know, it's a map we haven't seen as much in 1v1 because obviously it's a 2v2 map. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a... Well, we've used it so map, long for 1v1, we don't think of it that way, right? We're just like, That's oh, yeah, true. It's... it's just the map. Yeah. The one map we've had for the longest time. Yeah, you Lost play Frontiers this game, was... you, you play on the map, and the map is Lost Province. It was Frontiers, but no one really enjoyed Frontiers as much before it got remade. Yeah, Old just... Frontiers was terrible. New Frontiers is great. Yeah. Old well, Frontiers is pretty, but New Frontiers is just good. Yeah, better gameplay patterns. First one, maybe the yeah, rush exactly. was just it just felt too close and you always fell on the offensive of a four power cast. It's, it's, a good, it's a perfect map to try testing and stuff. Just get mm -hmm. stuff up and running. And now it's actually a good map. In free, it is 1 1 between Skicks playing as a Jari and Ocean Elk. Oh, Simu, sorry. Swamp. Whatever. Seamus playing the Seamus playing as a Dari as well this time. Curious choice. I mean ours I does do well in this map, but alright. I, I kind of get it. With two entries to the main well, you can place towers on both sides, but Jari's just great at juking in and out, and with the backdoor rocks, uh, the stony avenues of attack to your opponent, a is just a bit faster. So if you can find a way in, you can really cause some damage to your opponent and not let him uh, well, do what you're doing. I mean, what is... Okay, what is Seamus doing? They've gone for early Legion Hall. They've gone... Yeah, not expanding first. The first time that he hasn't expanded yeah. first. That's... That is unusual. Wait, does Seamus go... No, they went double Legion Hall. Ooh, one at the front as well. Okay, so Seamus now pushing for what Skix went for first game one. Yeah, let's see if he's a bit more decided than his opponent. Will he go for Pyre? Will he just jump on his opponent before he gets too many units out? And Because, yeah, it really makes the difference, right? It's about being decisive. Attacking before the units come is... Uh, Sigis will get his own Legion Halls up and running pretty quickly. And, yeah, he even gets two of his own. He knows he needs those units out ASAP. And that's what he's heading through. for. Now, granted, with Ajari, there isn't really a, any kind of I summon this thing and you die move. Heavens, you just... Helps. Well, but Heaven's Aegis is good enough, right? It's, it's, it's good enough that good. you'll win the it, fight. You'll win the fight. Yes. And if you win the fight, you probably take out the base, which is probably all Seamus really needs to do here. If he takes yeah, out Seamus, the base, he has a good lead. Well, they're not, I don't have that much damage to work with yet, but man, they got damage. Yeah, free Sipari already out for his opponent. And okay, Seamus expands behind this. His next Sipari are coming in. It has teapots to try and distract a bit, but the free on free is not a battle Seamus needs to take. <laughs> Ooh. And Skix having the healing off the hallowed ground. Ooh, and even, even the better micro there. Seamus can't take this. Seamus cannot take this. Even lost a unit to start with. Well, they got the expansion from behind, but no real damage. Skix is going to have an economic advantage and is able to defend that. Yeah, Seamus comes back in. He has four against six, so Seamus is on the is not a good path here. Uh, goes for a few modes, so I love this little counter harass, making his opponent out of position. Okay, okay, well, that'll help, at least to even things out a little bit. Now Seamus still doubling down on the mass Sabari. and Skicks hurriedly going up to the next stage, getting the monastery. That'll allow him to unlock the Soul Foundry. And uh, from there, he'll be able to get even as a counter Sapari a bit better like the Dervish, or the Absolvers both deal pretty well with them. I don't know, they're going for the Reliquary, which means they might just be going for straight up... They could be going for straight up Shao Saoshin, they could be upgrading their Zephyrs a ton. Either way, they're going to have the tech advantage pretty shortly. And Simus, what have they done to deal with this? Not much! 
just more Legion Hall, and Skix knows there's there is an expansion, but not much else. Yeah, hasn't gone into his opponent's base quite yet to try to figure out everything that Seamus is doing, but he doesn't need to too much. He knows the economical lead, as long as he keeps it. And I love this from Seamus, right? Just poking in with two Sapari all the time. And yeah, getting a mode here and there, and just running back out before losing anything. No, hey, before, losing anything, before losing anything, Before losing anything! Thank you. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Seamus always listens to us. That's why we love him. And Zephyr's we know are on the table. Yeah, so we expect Windstep Zephyr very shortly. Yeah, he did get both buildings. Um, yep. To get there. Actually, I, f I, I forget. Do you need the Soul Foundry to get Windstep? No, you need the you need the Relic Radio Windstep. Okay, there we go. Yeah. The I difference being polar. that beforehand, Skix would have had to make the Relic Radio to make Zephyrs at all. Yeah. Well, Skix gets map control at this point. Seems oh, coming in from behind if he wants. Oh, well, Skix, no, okay, Seamus does grab a Pyre Camp. Skix grabs the other. Boom. So, kind of back and, and forth. And Seamus heading for the counterattack. And rather substantial counterattack is that. They might be able to take out... Certainly the moats are dead. They might be able to even take out some of the ether extractors, perhaps. It depends on the timing. Oh. At the very least, even if Seamus doesn't kill anything, uh, he got his opponent back home and lets Seamus tech back up to the next stage he wants to get to. Okay, they're Which, Zephyrs. Good yeah, choice. honestly, it is, it's completely equal, right? They're both getting the exact same things. Here comes the Soul Foundry a bit faster for Skix. Getting that early economy lets him get a bit faster on that tech. And, yeah, that's the question. That, yeah, what tech are you going to go for? Are you going to go for Absolvers just to try to push forward, or are you going to go for Durbus to try to take out of all these Safari? Yeah, both options are... Both options can work. So Foundry coming out for Seamus. So both players are really going for the same thing so far. We're going to see the deviations come out with the Soul Foundry. Is someone going to head up right for Angelariums? Or will they prefer to stick on Soul Foundry tech and really go for that powerful push? Versus Wardens who are more about you know, counterattacking a bit a bit easier. They have some decent damage, but their counterattack potential is, is pretty much what uh, defines them. So that's... That's the real question. How well is that counterattack going to going to come through? Especially considering the attacks still are just pure Sapari, pretty much. I mean, you gotta love those little spearmen. Yep, they are handy, and Seamus had been using them quite a bit for run buys. Not anymore, it seems like. Yeah, he doesn't have his force on the west side anymore, too. <laughs> just come in by the west side, and that's a that's why you gotta leave on the east coast instead. Who wants to live on the west side when there's always going to be some things coming in to attack you? <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> you realize he moved for work, right? <laughs> yeah, he just moves to the west coast, I know. And look, that his reflexes are still there. He's always sending stuff to the west to, uh, to make sure to attack. Yeah. But his heart is still in the east. And that's what Seamus is, right? Still, still on the east side, still on the east coast. And loving it, about to... Maybe get mauled, because that's a lot of units coming in from Skix. Yeah, Skix. Skix really going for the tech, and Seamus, I don't really have the... They don't have the numbers to contest this. Certainly not in position. Skix. Skix still did not get all that pyre. Like, Seamus has been sneaking out pyre. Give him that. Sneaking out pyre. Sneaks out a third over in the top, bottom left corner. Well, that, Actually, that's a really fourth in the bottom left corner. Yeah, that's really the strategy for Ajari, right? Getting all that power for salvation, that just means... Your opponent's going to lose some units, you just won't lose any in the next fight. So it can make such a big difference if you use Salvation the right way. Of course, that the question is, is Skix going to just spot that expansion and cancel it? Seamus is playing it real risky. The fact that they don't have the units to support this. Yeah, in the third and the fourth. Well, Skix needs to commit something, and he's committing to a counterattack. Uh, but he might just get caught out. At least there's a nice exit out of this base. You can always get back on the other side. As long as he doesn't go right into the main. If he goes into the main, he's stuck. And okay, good. I was scared for a second. All right. Well, oh, no, going for the moats. And not great choice, it turns out. Do not lose those apart if you can help it, Skix. Because very shortly, Seamus is going to completely outpace you in terms of army production. Well, you say it up. Look yeah. at the army right now. 46 That's true. To 85. That's true. <laughs> but it's going to, in, in a couple minutes. Yeah, like, well, Seamus has just in? gotten set up. Oh, thrones. That's what Seamus is heading for. That's why oh, he has wow. nothing. He's just saving up to get these thrones out. Oh, okay. thrones and Sharu. Interesting. 
Yeah, that's that's a lot of E for coming in. Well, he is getting they do have all four the bases. E for bases. Yeah, yeah, all the E for bases. Still a bit of a scary proposition. As long as Skix... Oh, Skix has a timing window right now, right? If Skix wants they to get do. in, he, he can get in before the thrones come in. And he'll just destroy this entirely. Well, it's kind of a question of whether Skix decides to. Skix has been playing very passively. and Seems Skimus has picked up on that fact. Yeah, no, great play by Simus just seeing his opponent. Oh, oh man, that's a lot of wind steppers coming in. And another harassing force comes in. And this time Simus a bit out of oh, position. Oh, uh, yeah, harassing might be... No, oh, that's accurate, yeah. Oh, is he going to spot it? They spot it! They must be... Oh yeah, definitely see the Angel area. Yeah, as long as they spot it, right? That's that's a pretty big difference. You see... They didn't see the thrones. They might have seen... They might have seen the Eye of Aros that the Shara were coming. I don't think they oh. saw that Thrones are on the way. Well, Skix doesn't have to worry that much, right? He has the anti already. Like, Thrones are good. They do. They do have quite a bit. Hmm. Thrones are good. Uh, but it's more, again, timing based on Simus having the expansion. Skix hesitating. Every moment they hesitate buys Simus that much more time to get more Thrones out, more of an army out, get their economy to pay off. Well, Simus is completely out of position, though. Skix okay. is coming in, and Simus sees it, and oh man, he's in full panic mode. He's retreating as fast as he can. Uh, might just be a little too late, though. His base Skix, is forfeit. Skix has the third base taken out completely. Seamus coming in from behind, but only with Safari and one Saushin thrown on the way. And we'll see if it's enough. A bit of a surround yeah, Skix. on Skix's force, but uh, Skix going for Arc Mother. Getting out. Salvation from Seamus. A little close to the fight, but is enough to push Skix away. They don't want to lose their forces in vain. Yeah, that's really smart from the Skix, right? As soon as you Salvation... The fight's not worth taking. No. And as soon as it ends, he can just get back in there and kill everything. Uh, but Simo's at this point lost his third. Still has his secret third, so he's not too bad. They still oh, have man, that's a lot of ether built up as well. Yeah, that's a lot Ooh. of support coming in. Well, that's what the Sharu are for. Or Simus. But man, that is a super risky tech build. Like, Skix, I think... Skix is clued in. Like, they're going for thrones. They're going for tech. Now is the time to push. And they're going for it. Skix comes oh. in. Simus out of position once again. Going in to defend. Deals a bit of swords, but not a whole lot of firepower on Skix's side. Sorry, on Simus' side. Skix just takes out the Legion Hall for very low cost. Now they must realize there's a clock ticking on their head. Yeah, as those thrones start merging up. Of course, Kraft does have Castigators. They have a pretty decent answer to those uh, heavy, heavy, anti heavy, heavy air units. Uh, but at this point, he still doesn't need to transition there. He can just keep harassing and doing all the damage he wants, and he'll be pretty well off. The towers are up, which will heal up Simus's army. Uh, better question than it was long term. Now we're getting to the point where Simus, their expansions will start paying for themselves. Getting a fifth now. Skix still only on three bases. That's the thing, is Skix really doesn't have a whole lot. Sure the well. It's going to make it that much harder because now Sapari, what are they going to do? Oh, the thing is, with, yeah, with the type of army Skix has, he can win this fight. He just needs a proper surround, right? He has so much more army. If he comes straight up like this, it's a bit more trouble. But if he comes for a full 360 surround, he can annihilate this pretty easily. Uh, it's going to be depends on whether Seamus can get the swords and Ostrike down. And I, you're right, ZK, the surround would basically nullify that. Oh, let's see, he seems ready to pounce and... Okay, use his Heaven's, Aid, Heaven's right. Aegis. Heaven's Aegis drops. And come down come the swords. Ark Mother's prepped up, but a little bit too late. No, Ostrike effectiveness, that Angel though. Fire is pretty strong, but is it enough? Oh. Well, there's that surround you're talking about by Skix. Seamus dealing damage, but Skix ultimately is able to thin the, thin the horde. And now only two thrones remain. But Skix is out of Heaven's Aegis. The throne's gonna be enough. Skick coming through. Takes out the last throne. Seamus. Nothing to support this. And the third base goes down once again. Seamus. They've lost all those heavy tech units they built up. A couple Ark Mothers are coming in for extra support. It's simply not enough, though. And the Sharu doesn't start with enough mana to actually cast Ostrike from the factory. Yeah, so Skick's pushed away, dealt some damage, lost some units, but got rid of four thrones. Absolutely worth it. 
Oh yeah, SK is going to be happy with that engagement. Simu still behind us, has his five bases, so if he gets enough time, he might be able to do it. So Skix needs to show his decisiveness right now. He needs to keep pushing and take out Simus while Simus is still trying to rebuild with his heavy tech army. Gives over to help defend. Mm -hmm. uh, but Skix still has such a bigger army. The numbers don't lie here. They don't, and Skix is getting alloy only fourth. Oh, it's... It's getting Skix coming in. Gotta be careful with that Sharu. But otherwise, get the damage reduction fields out, and Skix... Away they go! Yeah, the Sharu's power sniped. splitting up Seamus' force. Seamus is already out of position. The Sharu didn't even manage to get an awe strike out before it went down, and now Seamus desperately trying to hold the line here, but that third... Looks once again like it's gonna fall. Wind step in. Skix able to take out the Absolver. Ark Mothers fall soon afterwards, and Simus, they are running out of an army. A reinforcement even coming in for Skix to help, but he doesn't even need them. His army is so much more powerful, and Simus is not long for the world of Lost Province. And uh, the East Coast is about to lose uh, one of their champions, who's gonna have to head to the West Coast to to part on his sins. And uh, yeah, goodbye, Simus. Unfortunately. Well, Seamus might have a chance. They do have reinforcements in their base. They're not huge, but Skix going off to of the fifth base does give Seamus some time to reinforce. Yeah, yeah, his Dark Matters are coming in. His He has a throne. If you support it, the Absolver's great at zone control, so they can dish out a lot of pain. Oh, but man, Are they just, upgraded, uh, though, is the question. That's true, like, too. They can actually be used on the offense. Oh, it might be. Mm. Still, at any rate, they're... Keeping Skix out, but Skix just took out two of Seamus' bases. Now has the economic advantage for the first time in this game. And, well, since <laughs> the early game. And that's... Yeah. Oh, that's oh, a question. Another advantage. Well, there it is. Good. Skix moving with the Heaven's Aegis. Going to take the Absolvers. The Absolvers and Thrones go down. That's it. Seamus dropping Salvation. Skix does not care. Is going to go surround the Stasis units. They can't be killed beforehand, but they get Salvation's over. Throne goes down, Resolver's out of position. Everything else is going to get wrecked for Seamus as Skix just running roughshod over Seamus' entire army. Seamus looking to re regroup, reinforce a bit, but not enough. The units simply don't have the health, and Skix takes game two and the series. Whew. A great series. Both our players showing some different strategies. Simus uh, played great defensively in the first game. Skix in the second game really using his uh, telepathic powers to get Simus' cat mm -hmm. to turn off his power switch. Powerful play. But in his third game, gets his uh, more regular win, uh, just dominating with numbers over his opponent. The numbers were great. The composition was great. The timing was great. Seamus like, did not get a chance to build up at that many thrones. The most they had was four, and Skix had this answer to that. Great game from both our players, and of course, Simus is not entirely out. He is in the loser. He is in lower bracket right now, so he can make his way back to the finals. And we believe in him. He has a he has the knowledge to move forward to get to the next part. And we'll be moving on with uh, Santa versus Skix. So we'll, we'll stick with Skix. We've seen some nice things from him. Let's see how mm -hmm. he deals with our uh, number one seed of this tourney. It will be a tough fight for Skix. I mean, back and forth against Simus got got warmed up. We can go with that. See how, see how that works. Mm. And Santa decides to go on Frontiers, which is known to have a lot of spiders. Uh, this is like uh, Santa's new obsession. Uh, he loves spiders now, so we'll just have well, to trust him on that. I, I haven't seen that many spiders on Frontiers myself. I don't know. I mean, I don't pay much attention to bugs. Really? No, I really know. Hmm. I realize they're, they are ecologically important. I just don't pay much attention to them. What am I, an entomologist? Yeah, yeah. I guess you don't really... You're not the type of person to get an ant farm, right? Uh, no. They'd get all over, and then Andre would eat them all. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess Andre would like them. Andre might actually appreciate it if you get an ant farm and would just knock it over for fun. Then the ants would be all over the place. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> I said Andre would like it, not that you would. And what makes you happy is what makes Andre happy, right? So you should get an ad farm? I Doesn't mean, work that way. What makes Doesn't me happy is if Andre's in good health. All right. Well, ants are full of protein, right? And they're like cats are carnivorous, so technically it works. I'm actually not sure if ants count as the right type oh, of protein. Oh, no, no, they carnivores. actually, like, there's a, the dry food that I have right now because he, Andre's having some digestive issues and the shelter that technically owns him because i'm technically just a permanent foster is they gave me this 
food that's basically mashed up bugs. So as oh. dry food. So yes, that is actually a viable option. So what you're saying is that you should get the ad farm. We're back to that, right? Are we back to you should get an ad farm for our no. and you get fresh food? No? Okay. No. <laughs> Dominic does not want his cat to get fresh food. Everyone get record this now. It's, no, uh... I want him to have like <laughs> fish. He doesn't. He wants like boar and lamb and it makes him sick, but he won't eat anything else. He won't it's eat like anything one, with lamb. The one food he eats makes him throw up after a while, but he won't Aww. eat anything else consistently. Aw. So you have to change it up all the time and you're down to mashed bugs. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I'm hearing you haven't tried live bug cider, but I guess that's not happening. I'm not trying. Well, I mean, there's the occasional spider that is in the house, but they've so far managed to escape Andre. Does Andre try to to, to attack them or not really? Well, if he gets the chance, yeah. Oh, okay. He just gives up before they die or? No, no, they just run away. Oh, okay. Like, remember, Andre can't climb walls. All right. Uh, there's an issue with cats sometimes. The wall no, climbing. not really. No, I'm quite appreciative of that Andre can climb walls. <laughs> he's, he's, good in, he's agile enough as it is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Getting on top of bookshelves and stuff like, no, how can you reach the top of that bookshelf? Okay, you just jumped. Okay. You yeah, can jump four don't, meters. Cats don't need to climb walls. You know, sometimes you don't jump need to fix it, but you just want something, like climbing walls. That's a point. I mean, that would be nice. I lie. mean, for him, for him, it would be great. He would love it. He would just go all over the place. Oh, yeah. But no, I don't live inside of a tree, so we can't climb the walls. I think he could climb a tree. Actually, I'd, I'd like to see that just put it up a tree and then cats climbs the tree just to get everywhere they want. And then you get the ants, too, so you get everything you ever needed. Oh, Even free protein. I mean, not wrong. I guess it would save me a bit on food. It might might have to cost a bit more on heating, but you're on the west coast and there's no cold there, barely. Uh, not usually. I mean, two weeks ago we had minus fifteen weather, but other than that, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it was weird. It was this weird cold snap. Yeah, we. I mean, it's been pretty warm lately here. Only minus ten. You know, it's getting. It's not too right. cold. Yeah. Yeah, it's warm. not too cold right now. By Montreal standards. <laughs> If we're winter, we get our we get our skating rinks nice and frozen. Yeah, it's like it's it's warm. only single digits negatives. It's, I know, right? It's absolutely just balmy here. <laughs> yeah, now let's let's talk about about Fahrenheit. Oh yeah, just single negatives Fahrenheit. Oh great, yeah. That would Isn't be actually single cold. negatives Fahrenheit. Like when salting the roads doesn't help anymore. Yeah, I think so. It would be minus twenty, minus twenty or so. Some like so, yeah. We do not want that. Oh, I cores. Oh no, incubators. Oh, that's the spiders he was talking about. Yeah. Okay, so Santa it's behind all this. Yeah, that's what Santa meant. He decided to go for a build that gives him the best spider-like units, and well, those are the spiders. Incubators just launching their little young limbs at the opponent. That seems very Aru. Yeah. And his kicks behind us playing hybrid defensive because he's getting all the bases. And hopefully he can defend with a Jari. Uh, but my pet difficult against those free units that the incubator cast. That's that's where Skix's overall approach is gonna run into trouble because they don't have Oh god, that is creepy. They don't have a lot of tech. They haven't been going for a lot of tech. And they're gonna be having to struggle now. If they have Windstep Dervish, they're probably fine. It's risky, but they can at least get past the kittle to get the incubator behind them. Uh, well, we'll, see how this, we'll have to see how this push works from Santa. We haven't seen this happen quite often. Uh, well, actually, we haven't seen it at all. Mass incubator with no. mass hunters. It, it's a good timing, right? Santa really planned this okay, out. It's getting creepier the longer I look at that. God's incubator animations. I mean, they're they're really well done. They're just kind of just like they're, beautiful. They're, they're, uh, yeah, they're just very unsettling. All right, there we go. Heading for the tower to begin with. This case coming in from the back and might be just a bit right. too slow to save it. Heaven's Aegis comes in. He wants to jump on it. Oh, but Malak has her spell and there's nothing they can do to survive now. Well, Santa... Santa will get the tower down. That's that's the win. And continues along. Skix? Okay, this is a bit risky, but Santa decides, hey, upgrade some stuff. Got hey, the he kills, wants bigger got spiders. Upgrades. They want yeah, bigger the spiders. spiders. Spiders were too small. Resolver's up for Skix. Stand able to get around them. One more resolver goes down. That's going to be it for the Skix's defenses. Quite a bit of damage done, but Santa does not care. Reinforcements come through. 
Gets us around on Skix's army, and that third is in jeopardy. Hey, he gets to cancel it though. It's not a full on. Uh, it's not a full on loss. A True. Cancel means he can reuse his resources for more units, which he definitely needs if Santa keeps pushing for his spiders. Well, Skix has plenty of resources in the bank. It's more. At this point, a solid choice of what do you go for? You know your opponent's got Mass Incubator, Mass Hunter. What do you guess they're going to go for next, and what do you go for to deal with that? Ah, uh, yeah, let's see what he decides to head for, right? It's more Legion Halls and Absolvers. So playing a defensive game, not the Dervish, uh, that deal extra damage to those, to those Quiddles or those Mass Hunters, but Absolvers are great at zone control, so I see why he's get, heading for that direction. Make sure those Mass Hunters just can't do all that much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If we look at the Indian last fight, there was a few Absolvers. Yeah. He, he, they dealt with the, the army pretty well. It's just Sandhead big they just, too much. Yeah, they weren't well defended is the problem. Yeah, it's all about position sometimes, and Santa's heading up for the next great position. Santa going for the fight. Skix has the Absolver in the back line. Santa going to deal with it. Once again, abilities drop. Santa able to take down that Amor, that, Amor, that Absolver, and Skix, once again, with the small army. Reducing the incubator count a little bit here and there, it's just not enough of an army on Skix's side. The kill, way too much of a problem to deal with here. And that, that quickly gives Santa game one. And the incubator is just so powerful Sorry. in these cases. Yeah, incubator is really doing their job, doing great on this on these trades. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, getting all of those in. Like generally, the thing is, if you get incubators so quickly, you'll be you'll be in a bit of trouble because you don't have any standing army to defend them. Uh, but he just has a perfect timing. Scout that his opponent was heading for a third, so wouldn't have as many units as uh, as you can yet. And uh, because yep. of that, Santa was able to really take advantage of that and take uh, take game one in a very strong timing push. So with that, it's going to be the it's gonna be Skips' map pick. What mm. map does Skix want? Which maps does he think are there less chance of getting spiders? Uh, he believes the canyon might just burn them all off. It's, there's a bit more sand in this map, and spiders aren't known for sand, right? Or there's special spiders I don't know um, about. What? Yeah, there are a lot of... It's well, mostly like tunneling spiders that like dig into the sand and then jump out at prey. Okay, that's actually scary. I don't want to hear about those. They're pretty big, too. Mm, great, so they're the ones that are just going to jump on birds or something, right? Oh, yeah, no, no, it's actually worse. Worse. It's, it's, it's much, much worse. Okay, yeah, please keep going. I'm really <laughs> intrigued and interested by getting killed by spiders. Oh, man. I don't know if they're fatal to humans. I mean, I think the ones that are worse to fatal to humans are actually on the West Coast. Oh, of course they are. That's always yeah. the West Coast. It's always back to the West Coast. Or Australia. Yeah, Australia, well, Australia is a hell world. Yeah, well, Australia is west of the West Coast, so of course it's worst. That's true. It is mm. the Westest Coast. Yeah. Then you go to the west coast of Australia, it's like, oh man, that's where it gets really dangerous. I mean, okay. yes, actually, the west coast of Australia is the less populated one. The east coast is where most of the major cities are. Yeah, yeah just like Perth or something, and that's about yeah, it. Yeah, I think Perth is the only west coast, major west coast city. Yeah. Well, that's what you want. Well, what else is there to do, in, to do on the west coast? Well, there's a lot of reefs, actually. It's known to have like a lot of natural yeah. wonders, but... Yeah, if you want to get your leg cut underwater by something that's going to be very hard to heal... Reefs are yeah. great. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. West Coast. It's always the West Coast. <laughs> exactly. West is death. Yeah. Well, Santa heading for another type of timing push, heading for double Efer before expand. Uh, Skate's going a bit more normal this time around. No, oh, always going normal, just expanding first. And that's when he should be afraid, but his first scout got killed, and he won't be able to see right. what comes next. Well, let's see what Skix has up their sleeve, because Santa... Santa sees what they have so far. <laughs> yeah, so Santa right now knows he doesn't have to worry too much. It's just going to yeah, be... Yeah, there's not... No no harassment. Yeah, this is going to be a normal attack, a normal... Like, a nor just a normal thing. He can concentrate on his timing. Doesn't have to worry about it. Uh, Ooh, guess are those early a call? That looks like an early 10s a call. Yeah. Another timing push. Skix, not currently known for going for much tech, but... With the expansion, yeah, that is a timing. Santa does have the game advantage. So they could just go for it. Yeah, it depends if Santa wants to see how Santa deals with it. He got no units, so you're most likely right onto the calls, right? We don't want spiders this time around. We want uh, beastie beetles that just jump on you. There we go. All the calls all day. 
Yeah, six of them. And well, let's see how Skates decides to deal with it. He hasn't really seen it come. He's seen that there was no expansion, <laughs> which could be enough of a oh, tell, sure. right? No expansion. Double oh Eifer. dear, another, another altar. Oh, yeah. Now Santa's uh, Santa's going uh, a bit all in with this. A little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> it is defendable, but pretty hard to do. <laughs> it's pretty hard to do, even if you know how to counter it. And what the counter is is. The prison really one is just like being perfectly defended, getting the right units. Mostly, you want mostly Zephyrs to deal with it as you can out micro a bit and using the tower for defense. Uh, but Santa is heading in right now. Well, or decides the full want reinforcement. They want, to get, they want to get the full complement as it calls. Yeah, get a bit more power along the way as well. No doubt. I mean, you just drop the. You can drop Red Harvest to make it that much harder to. Well, kill the army because. Even dead Zikals then become Kittle. Yeah. Your own there dead you Zikals and your opponent's units also become Kittle. It's just a lot of Kittles yes. coming in. It's, it's a lot of Kittle. We saw the last game how well that worked out. So Santa knows that's a good strategy. Ah, well, he'll know not to go through the main path, just head through the third place location. And there's a small choke point. But John uh, Skix does not have the proper units to defend it. And Santa has a huge arc right they now. They do spot it. They do know. Hey, there's an army coming in. That's not looking good for you. Nope, not at all. Well, coming into Hallowed Grounds, I think that's a bit of advantage with that. A little bit. I mean, extra shields is nice, but... <laughs> yeah, it's not mm. going to be a difference maker. Nope. Okay, so Foundry. Where's the chip? Yeah. Well, in any event, that expansion did not pay off. Like I said... Timing attack coming in here. Red Harvest dropped as well. Counter to counter Skix's Heaven's Aegis. Santa Claus going for the Zephyrs. They take those out. It's over. Trying to get this around. Skix. Skix microing back reasonably okay. Losing a lot of Sabari in the process, but not too, too much damage. Still, Skix only has one base now. He has an Absolver out, which can help deal with this decently if, uh, if his opponent decides to jump on it. Dies pretty quickly, but there's enough uh, enough frontliners to defend it. Santa just heading for map control, killing the towers. Might as well. It's not like Orism where doing that reduces pyre, but hey, Skix is blind. Like, yeah. they got nothing on the map. They can't see anything without scouts. Yeah, he's going to have enough trouble as is, and, see, and Santa behind is getting a bit extra pyre. Do we head in for the next push? He can get another Red Harvest come in powerful on his opponent. I also make sure that Skix has not been sneaky. Yeah. Because, I mean, Skix was sneaky in game two. Like, they, or was it game two? No. Sorry, that, that was, was Seamus. That you're right, Seamus that was Seamus. Sneaky. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> yeah, Seamus the sneaky guy. We all knew that. That's East Coast behavior being sneaky, but. Actually, it's sneaking off to the West Coast. That's really sneaky on him. <laughs> You're never going to let that go, are you? Never. I can't believe he left us. It's unbelievable. See, was, he should have stayed on the East. I mean, you're technically in the, more of the center. Like, the the coast is another, like, thousand kilometers east of you. You're saying that, like, a thousand kilometers is a lot. Have you seen Canada? I mean, I have. And have you seen all 3,000 kilometers of it? 3,500 kilometers? Yeah, 3,500 kilometers of Canada, that's a lot. I mean, I've flown over it a couple times. <laughs> no, I guess. All the way to the east, to the east point. You not the easternmost point, no. I have not gone to St. John's. Mm. I probably should at some point. I've, I've got, like, I, I know people there, but, yeah. My uncle's from St. John's. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's for me. But... We are on the westernmost side of this map as Santa Claus pushes in for what might be the kill. Warden out for Skix to at least help a little bit against the Zikals that cannot shoot up. It's going to be down to the Absolver, though. That's where the damage is coming from, and it's... Is it going to get protected? Well enough for Santa to back off, apparently. It is just that Skix hasn't expanded behind this, so... No, they have not. What is the ball up here? Those wardens are great. Wardens can harass us. Santa still has no anti-air at all. 
Torrin has free reign on everything. Uh, but there's two bone canopies coming yeah. out. So they had coming no in here at all. Although, no. Forest of Mass Hunter. Santa Claus clearly was going for the behemoths instead. Skix slowing that down just slightly. But how do you behemoth off two bases? I don't know. I guess building nothing else helps. That is the way. <laughs> you don't have to build anything. You just build behemoths off your huge army of Zakaz that will never die. Because that's what Zakaz were all about, not dying. Yep. I mean, that is, in fact, what they're all about. The whole point of them is that they don't take a lot of or they but don't take a lot of damage when they have their shield slash overgrowth when you get the upgrade on them so they don't take a lot of damage until they do <laughs> oh here comes the warden set just want to poke at these enemies and there's a big zakal so if you can get that big boy mala will be unhappy if they can it's oh i got go. one of them Ooh. okay That's what I wanted. the santa they don't actually have plans for things that shoot up. Now, for some masked hunters, they were planning on behemoths. Everything shoots down. That hey, masked hunters doing the job. Offering masked hunters to get rid of one of the wardens at least. That does give Skix the room to expand, which is more important for them. Santa only on two bases still, really trying to push that end game tech, and they <laughs> might very well be able to. Yeah, that final push. There is there are a lot of Zephyrs though on uh, Skik's side, so he has the, the tools to deal with it. It's gonna come down to the engagement. We can look at the army value as well. Skix is actually ahead right now, surprisingly so. Uh, but Santa does have 250 pyre, which he can use for everything. Yeah, that's gonna be. I, yeah, you're right. Could very well just be rain of blood into red harvest because why not? Skix, oh, but if he catches you, it's out of position. Yeah, they again, there's only a few mass hunters that shoot up. Those wardens are in a good spot. The rest of the army, Skix. I mean, it's actually pretty well set up to deal with these to call. And as Santa's army is set up to get all the power, that just means all his armies are just a little bit smaller. So if Skix can pick Skix him off gets one at down, yeah, he can pick him off one at a time. As Santa tries to reunite his army, but that Santa's the one getting surrounded now. Oh, these mass hunters go down. The wardens are completely free. Santa, good rain of blood, but nothing, everything that shoots up is gone. The Wardens have free reign. Skate's going for the retreat, but they've got this. They pretty much wiped out all of Santa's army in the process. Well, it's the Behemoths Which, coming in. Probably true. didn't think he had enough yeah. to deal with the four Behemoths, the embiggened Behemoths on top of it. Also, that was not a bad choice, as Santa did go for the backline attack, and Skix able to intercept that. So Skix able to hold this off completely. Santa's early advantage starting to fade. Yeah, but the Behemoths are still a scary unit. That, you know, yep, that's true. That's true. The, end, the final endgame unit of, uh, of the Aura Army is not, is not to be uh, trifled with. So now it's a matter of whether Skix can actually take that out. Like get Sentinels or... I mean, I guess Castigators? I feel like Sentinels are going to be the way to go. I think should probably be able to afford to do that. Actually, I guess our Sentinels are a great idea, come to think of it. So no, go for that. Get the Missile Shield. Yep. Sentinels are, as you said, it wasn't that much anti-air to begin with, so even less anti-air as even more behemoths come in. There's, yeah, like, again, a handful of mass Hunters. That's, like, Skix's major advantage right now. They have Wardens. They can drop in a few Sentinels to help get rid of the behemoths, and now it's going for Zephyr instead. I think Skix doesn't quite realize that Sentinels block missiles, and against Aru, that's amazing. All right, for I against Aru, especially about. if you're in hallowed grounds or your shields are regenerating all the time. It's just like good luck getting through that with Aru. Every single one of their units uses projectiles. I under aren't any. Well, even Kittles. I mean, the Kittle. No, the Kittle. I don't think do. You're right. The Kittle don't. don't. Do and the Symbiote. But we can't forget the Symbiote. They're a unit. Yeah. Kind and, of. you know, if Santa decides to go for it, the Bloodbound does use melee attacks, but eh, they're not going for it. Yeah. Well, it's not as if Santa would ever do a symbiote rush or something, right? He's not the type to attack of symbiotes. No, oh, no, no. It's not like he invented those. No, he would never. <laughs> not this type of style. Mm, well, certainly not the Kittle. Oh, no, Kittle are range. My bad. Oh, wow. <laughs> what is it range? Not a symbiote. Bloodbound. Said. Oh, blood blood symbiotes. There is one. There you guys. And yeah, okay, Sam. 
Yeah, oh, no, Sand has gone the Pemis up. Yeah, Frond is the answer here. Get some Frond. No, much it, it timing? could be. At oh, this timing? Bit... Yeah, they need to come out uh, with only two bases. To... I think it's. I don't know if Skix has the resources to make that actually pan out, but they're oh, going to go just for made it. Two he just made two Frons before the the blades got destroyed. Uh, the the crown building. <laughs> yeah, at least they they managed to get some value out of it. It's just again. Now they got the Sentinel out. That's that is something. Just he will. The base survives. Like, that's the problem. They're, they're, Man Necropolis is going down. One behemoth is going to go down in the process, but who cares? You've taken out a base at the cost of some of your army. So what? Santa's just full on all in behemoth. Wants this game over with and ve may very well get that. Kevl Castigators are on the way from Skix to help get rid of the behemoths. But again, the behemoths just need to take out the other Acropolis, and that is game. All right, he's going to get a win just by winning the game. Yeah, just exactly. Like, not even forcing the a game, surrender, just way. forcing you to die. And there it is, just gets a surrender. And there we go, Santa 2-0 into the winner's finals. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious what's been happening on the other side oh, of the Oh, apparently bracket. Magical says that resins do not fire projectiles. Which is a news to me. Hmm. Okay, now I'm just curious about the animation. Is it like vines that go underneath the ground a bit like lurkers to just like jump out of the units? And I don't you know. Do I thought that they did fire projectiles. I thought so too. Because it's mm. resonance, right? There's resin of some sort. I mean, resin can be applied directly by touch, but I guess. Yeah. Who knows, who knows how they want it, how it's going to be implemented. I'm still waiting for those final designs. are going to be fun to see once they get in. That's true. Back animations. That was a lot of things. A lot of animations, a lot of art. It's all a matter of making sure that the gameplay's solid. And after that, it's art. All art, all the time. <laughs> That's never going to stop. There's always something better you can do. And Tyrion said, okay, this is good enough. Time to release the game. It's like, oh, okay, we're not making the art better anymore. Oops. I mean, they still could, technically. But yeah. you, you got you to find a cutoff point for marketing and all that. I think that's what they found so far. It's just like what they have now. And then animations and, you know, eventually gets there. How are the other games going? Because there's the match between Nautifier and Mr. Kareem, which should be over by now. I would have assumed so. We went to... Oh, it might have crashed a few times. Yeah, it's still 1-1 for their match. Okay. Still 1-1 20 minutes ago. Ongoing. Okay, so in the game three. I... You still okay, yeah. ZK? Yeah, I'm good. We're ready for the Great. second... Awesome. Winners. Ready for the second winner's semifinal. Can we excited why YJZL? Uh, against Not of Warrior, who just had a very long series against Mr. Kareem that lasted about an hour and a half or so. Or a bit over an hour, let's say. Mm -hmm. Long best of three. So we'll see uh, We'll see if this one takes quite as long. As we've seen so far, we've seen that happen before with these players, why Giselle uh, can sometimes either cheese or just play uber defensively. Um, we'll see if Not of Warrior maybe learned from the last few games how to end those type of games before they get to that stage. Uh, sometimes yeah. long guys can get messy. It seemed like they were pretty evenly matched, so I'm curious to see how Voyeur and Wajizo go at it. Yeah, Wajizo is a player we've seen a lot. He's participated in most tournaments so far. Uh, he generally... Nah, he's he's played a lot of uh, of um, Uzo lately, actually. Enjoying her gameplay. That's Before been he was... their main, yeah. 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 He used to play only Orzum and played uber defensively, and then has expanded his gameplay to play mostly Zo, just trying to figure her out, getting to... Her and her get the timings down, and uh, we'll see. He, he's the type of person I could see going for those uh, big Zakal pushes as well that Santa just showed us. He has Why many is that tricks. The kind of, yeah, they're the kind of player that really tries to grind things out. Like they want to just do one thing and then do the one thing and just really, really, really make it perfect, yep. which is a little hard to do in Immortal since the game requires that you're pretty responsive. But hey, that, if it's a rush, one... if it's a rush, it could work. <laughs> True. True. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it may be very well what they are up to. Yeah. Running into a game, he is flicking Zol as expected. His opponent will be going for a Jari. Uh, okay, not the same time as last match, but a similar Kra versus Aru. We've had a lot of those and always enjoyable. Well, actually, all three matchups Kra versus Kra, Aru versus Aru, or, or Kra versus Aru, all pretty fun in their own ways. Listen, I just enjoy the fact that all, all, of, the, all of the immortals get their playtime, get their time in the light. And uh, we'll see how they, what strategy go for. Early expand for Nana Voyeur. Watch it sound. Same thing, a little bit later, but 
Same idea. No, no just see. after, just after yeah, Ether expand. Pretty standard for for Zol, actually. You want that, yeah, you're right. You want that early Ether. There's so many Ether dependent units that Aru has, and I don't want to be stuck on that. Yep, majority doesn't quite need it. Just as fast as you can do a lot of just your early Separis, there's not going to be any air units coming to harass you too early. Does imply that there's likely to be a an early Zakal push. I mean that having you know having that early ether makes it easier to get Zakals going, and Zakals have been a very popular opener for well more for Mala than Zol, but still a reasonably popular opener for Aru since the last patch. Yeah, no, exactly. Zakals have gotten a bit better right now. They're better at just dishing out some pain, so. People, people like going for them. And, ooh, the teapots coming in to try to kill their opponent. Won't quite get there. Yeah, teapots yeah, getting very just Yep. Yeah, teapot yeah, Voyeur, Voyeur trying to deny why just Zao because teapots have new attacks. and Well, Voy we haven't seen Zao actually make use of that that much, but we, in the 2v2 tournament last week, we saw a ton of, like, two-on-ones for teapots, and Voyeur has a mind for that sometimes. Oh, that's what the teapots are all about. Just denying vision, trying to get vision. And the little gameplay patterns are perfect to just get in there. I do like the fact that, you know, having two teapots together has a value. Oh, because, definitely. like, you're more guaranteed to get the scouting because if you hit other teapots, you can take them out. Yeah, but, but of course, a lot you can see less of the time. Yeah, it's a lot about time and space than just trying to get on your opponent mm -hmm. at the right time. Well, not if we're getting his first pirate cat, and where is Zao heading to? Is he heading for the corner of the Okay, he's heading for some type of different path attack. Mm -hmm. He can't get there in time. I Oh, well, he's using the teapot to, the, to just distract him. I, it looks... No, nope, they are going to go for the hit. Go for the hit, try oh. to go for the pirate steal. They do take... Okay, No, what are you doing, Zao? Well, oh, he gets the pirate? Yeah, he gets the do. pirate. Get the pirate at the cost of one bone stalker, but... For one Sapari, so hey, a great advantage trade. Zao. Yeah, yeah, really good trade on his side. And not a word heading back behind this is how getting his own pirate cap behind this, so really huge power advantage for him. And Voyer at least has that slightly faster base. And behind this, heading for the South Shin and so Foundry. Mm hmm. So that's been teching up instead of getting a lot of units. It's something we've seen a lot of dispatch of people getting a lot of units. This is kind of unusual, heading out for the tech faster than a lot of units. It's very risky. It used to be the safe play, because you just you get tech so quickly, and tech is still a major advantage compared to unit count. But since since the last patch, it takes everyone just that little bit longer. It's like 10-20% longer. Plus the fact that if for Voyeur has to build an entire other tech structure, the Monastery of Izer, in order to continue along the main tech path. It just takes, it, it takes long enough that building up units, like, as the way Zhao is doing, gives you the opportunity for a timing push against someone who is teching up like Voyeur is. Yeah. And this one, okay, Absolvers. Absolvers for not a Voyeur side, so playing yeah. defensive with Zhao shit. Oh, and man, if Zhao, yeah. if why does Zhao went for the attack instead of going for, at this point, somewhat superfluous pyre, that would be so devastating. They might still have a chance, but I oh, think definitely. Zhao, I think Zhao's a little skittish about going for an attack they when they first started playing Zhao was very suicidal with their armies and hmm. they might be overcorrecting, not realizing that no their opponent's gone for tech you can go for an attack it's gonna it might hurt you a bit but it's gonna hurt them a hell of a lot more yeah a, a, a lot of this game is about poking right you just gotta decide can i take this fight yes you engage no okay just head back you can still yeah. go see your opponent you can always go poke and see stuff lose one light unit. At this point, Not of Warrior has his absolvers. He's ready for a push, but he might just get hit from oh, behind. Oh. They're getting surrounded. Zalbert's not have time to set up. Oh, the body for a hit. oh, that body block taking out an entire absolver. Voyeur able to retrieve, but they don't have the space to set up the absolver without it dying, and Zhao catching up. Oh, really using those teapot beautifully, just getting in the way of the absolver and get shot a few extra times. Won't go down, but those few extra shots, man. That, that was, was a free really absolver. Easy. That was a free absolver. There's no, there is no problem with that. Yeah, it was worth a soul. It was worth a soul summon for that. To get a free absolver, you get an expansion behind it. Why does that was doing really well right now? Oh yeah, he's playing 
He's playing really well. He keeps on improving every week. It's always a joy to see him play like this. Well. Boyer coming through in the middle of the choke point. South has the advantage. They have ranged units. Do not go through the choke point into an Aru player. Voyeur realizing this. Maneuvering the top. If the fight is here, it's going to be Voyeur's advantage, at least for positioning. But Voyeur a little bit caught out. Zao, Zao taking some free Sapari. Yeah, Zalber set really up. Has to Zao going for the back lines. One Zalber goes down. It happens he just drops. Second Absolver goes down. Voyeur starting to lose a few more of the units and decides don't don't go for it. Two Absolvers is a good trade. Oh, that was a perfect... And now he just gets to wait, right? He doesn't need to engage until Heaven's Age just runs out. Of course, even when she does, they'll still have a bit of shields. And Oh, he's oh, just, wow. he, he's oh, just wow. setting up a whole point of hunting attack. Grounds, hunting grounds and Bloodwell just going for it. Oh, that's the Saoshin. <laughs> well, extra damage in the Saoshin worked out. But yeah, that Bloodwell's... That's going to be annoying. Extra healing from that. And enough. Wow. Okay. All the pyre paying off. Voyeur going for the last little hit here. Absolver goes down. Voyeur struggling to push back here. Microing reasonably well. They just don't have a lot of units to work with as Zhao cleaning up the last stragglers of Voyeur's army and taking out this third base. Yeah. Why does already has his third established? He's coming in caught a kill, but it's not really going to be enough. As Voyeur has to count on his tech right now to push him forward. Oh no, the Salishin. Okay, jumps in. Ooh, barely survives, but there's not many units here. Absolvers in the back, but they weren't deployed. And the reinforcements come in for, for Zal. Zal's reinforcements. Voyeur deploying Absolvers once again. Why is Zal being careful to get out of their range? They just want to take out the expansion. They don't need to get close to the Absolvers. And it's just a perfect game for Why Zal just getting out of the way. <laughs> And as soon as the Absolvers push now. up. Ah, and the Absolvers are it on their own. Why does Zao takes it? Solid opening and solid demonstration of just the changes in tech. Why does yeah. Zao simply had way more potential here? Yeah, he, he just showed his decisiveness there. Was waiting for a yes. perfect upgrade. Went for the push. Yes. A perfect timing of coming in. And man, he might actually be a good contender against Santa. That's going to be a very fun game in the next one. Yeah, winner's finals. Why does that, if they win, goes up against Santa Claus? Otherwise, yep. none of Voyeur goes up against Santa Whoever wins goes up against Santa Claus. Yeah, exactly. Because that what we've seen right now is there's a lot there's a lot of power from YJ Zhao showing his timing attacks. Mm -hmm. And if Voyeur ends up winning this, he's going to show that he knows how to defend those. He knows how to deal with that. And that's pretty much Santa's game recently as well, right? Going for those big, strong timings with spiders. And we'll see how this shapes up. I cannot have Voyeur hold this off in the next game. Yeah. Oh, people are wondering, the Blood Well will heal nearby units. Okay, it provides Rootway, which on its own already gives units shields, or overgrowth as it's called, as well as in some cases gives extra stuff. It heals units nearby, and it also gives mana. And a bunch of people in the chat are answering that as well. So yeah, that's what it does. Yeah, thank you people in chat, good old Matchko and Pigeon. Or people that compete in this tournament often, but couldn't this week. Always happy to have them in chat, checking it out and helping out. Yeah, heading for our second game of this series. Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, we'll have to see how Voyeur responds. In the first game, we've okay. We haven't seen not of Voyeur yet. This was the first game we've seen from him in this tournament. I was wondering if he was playing different Immortals. I think he's been a pretty big Jargon Joyer for a little while. Let's see if he keeps. Uh, he he sticks with a jar and finds another solution. Not of Voyeur has been in a Jargon Joyer forever. Are you kidding? Me? That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. I was like, you know, it feels like yeah, he's only no. been playing a jar. I mean, not only a jari but, but mostly certainly yeah like they played a bit of aru from time to time but no voyeurs like we were saying warden dervish that's all a jari warden dervish oh okay that's a huge that's been something they really liked i don't know why in my head i was like not for him sorry oh, no, sorry like... i think a life forger i'm thinking life oh, okay i was like light, light. i'm sorry yeah i was like not of war we haven't seen him all that much you're right sorry not of war is a bit more flexible yeah <laughs> Well, to be fair, Light Forger's been pretty flexible, but yeah, he's been the Ajari Enjoyer. Yeah, most but Light Forger has always gone for the kind of like silly, well, seemingly silly, very harassment oriented play. Yeah, getting in and out of it. Mass Thrones for a while. Yep. Uh, he was the one that got in with the Behemoth uh, Wraith Bow meta for a bit. Oh, right. That. Yes. Oh, yeah. He initiated yeah that. When, when Mal was, was bugged. He initiated that. Was that, was a, that, was a, that was a time.
Yeah, yeah those of you not familiar, there was a period where... So Mala has a passive where you gain one pyre when a unit dies near a blood well. And actually, it's supply dependent. But at the time, it was one pyre per unit per blood well. Oof. So if you had half a dozen blood wells and... a I, I think Kittle might have actually re replenished it. But even if they didn't, if you had like half a dozen blood wells in an area, you would get like two... Like 200 pyre in a battle. And I think Kittle actually did repl replenish it because I recall seeing like Kittle die and then all of a sudden the pyre count goes up by 300. Oof. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, it was infinite a bug. Rain it got of fixed. Blood. Yeah, it got fixed. Blood. It got fixed. It was, it was just one of the, like when Mal was first introduced. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there someday. We'll, we'll, we'll get another buggy state like that. I can't wait for the next time I have. It's like, oh, we just didn't realize that and that might just happen whenever we get Jorah drop. Uh, probably later this year. Well, from what I've heard it's, from the devs, they're really planning on having it sooner yeah. rather than later, so hopefully in the next few months. But it's impossible hopefully. to say, right? It's impossible I mean, to say, as a game is in development, yeah. and it's hard. Yeah, but the early, it's, earlier it's they can get the units, the earlier we get to play, and the earlier they get feedback, which is what the devs want, really. But yeah, it sounds like we're going to be getting Jorah as a test, and then beta, but yeah, I'm not entirely really sure of the timing. Yeah, I can't wait to get my block units again. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, I think there, there's some models. I oh, think yeah. Worker has had a model forever. Oh, yeah. The Wraith Ball was a great model as well. I love the Chopstick Ball. I think... Uh... <laughs> yeah, that was... No, as you said, the Worker is already in the Power Driver we've seen. A lot of units still need to get tested their gameplay, so they'll be blocked out before the art is really implemented. And yeah, that's just the development of the game. Don't want to do art for a unit that might not make it in. So first, got to try out the, try out the units. We'll have fun with those. With those block out models <laughs> with huge flash of light for the attacks yep Alrighty. so we for now just have the two factions and the two immortals each which i mean it's working out all right <laughs> behemoth blood well yeah magical pointing out it was a dark okay magical confirming kittle did give pyre yeah so did. it was kittle near blood near half a dozen blood wells <laughs> one pyre per blood well per kittle yep and he you just... have a behemoth so like Half a dozen behemoths, that's 24 Kittle, so that's 24 Pyre per blood well. Yeah, it was yeah. it was mad. And then it you just went really to the blood, and they just went to the pyro camps and placed it all there. So you could actually attack something to get those free quittles from the behemoths. It was pure. Yes. Was yeah, because people era. would set up in the middle of Lost Province where the pyro camps already are. Yeah. Ah, those were the days. Next buggy state, can't wait. Yep. <laughs> well, we're back in the game. Mallow versus Zoll, so uh both the, uh, not okay. of not changing it up. Well, it's, important. it's relevant to point out Mala. No, to be fair, what I just mentioned was an old, old, old thing that got fixed. Mala only gains, I believe it's half supply rounded up. Something like that. Pyre when a unit dies. Yep. And we haven't seen... There's not as many blood wells there was in that era where you could just glue them together. Well, to get it's more that it's not yeah. per blood well. It's, yeah. it's if, if there's a blood well nearby. Not wow. each blood well does it. Not infinite, not infinite blood. Unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, not of order. Getting the double E for does get the mass hunter, so it's not going to be full on just, just waiting for that full accomplish. Uh, but yeah, Zal heading for the expansion this time. Oh, the normal build really. Yeah, this is not e for expansion at the altar. Voyer is the one that's going a little bit more aggressive now. Double ether altar. Got the mass hunters early on. Yeah, no expansion seemingly on the way. Uh, we'll have to Not see seemingly. what. Yeah, what's the next building? That's always the question. Neurosite, it might very well be all early offering Master Hunter. Hmm. I mean, with offering Master Hunters become pretty potent dealing with mass with uh, mass hunters. I'm not sure they deal that well Dude. with the Zakals, but they're not horrible against it either. No, they're fine against the calls. It's more a question of if they don't have offering, Bone Stalkers are better pound for pound. Yeah. Okay, so you need to get as fast as possible or go for yes. the calls. Okay. So way. And behind yeah, us, so, he just so, wants map control. That's Voyeur. Voyeur needs to get those upgrades. Yeah, that's about getting... Okay, there he goes expanding afterwards. But his opponent there does not see that. expanding again. Yeah, but he made sure that Zal does not know about it. That's a real scary part as yep. Zal can canceled his expansion. He thinks it's an oh. all-out push. Okay. And you know, that is the smart move, right? When you think your opponent's going for an all push, you need more units, so you make them. 
which uh, means that Zhao could go for an all-out push themselves. The, again, Zhao's units are a little bit stronger than Voyeur's without upgrades. Now, yeah, granted, offering is very likely on the table now, but yeah. still. Oh, wow. Vo Zhao is really paranoid. Yeah, he's... Well, I mean, he thinks that's the best way he can lose, right? But then he cancels the expansion. That's that's a real scary part at this point. If not, if just keeps this for map control, he has a solid lead, but he has no oh, yeah. way to know either. Just... just just from intimidation factor alone, Zhao will spot the expansion and realize that they were, they were tricked. They were juked. Oh no! The mind yep. games, the mind games were too strong in this game, and Zhao will have to put down his vase. The hunting ground's still there to defend if anything happens. But man, not of order <laughs> with the mind games, the mind tricks, the Jedi mind tricks from totally not of order. Just hey, bottom time for the bottom time for offering. Bottom time for extra units. Bother early red. Oh wow, are they going for like full offering upgrades, or they're just going to go straight into dread sisters? I don't know. That's a I I'm going to assume that just is full a, offering upgrades. That is an interesting choice. Nay, hey, he's still standing. Yeah, actually, he, even if he, he's still getting altars, but altars do come from the same spellcasters. But yep. we haven't seen spellcasters come in that early. They're better against large group of units, which. This is not a small group of units, but not the big ones that spells really make a big I don't difference. Know. I mean, in. birthing storm against an army like this, decent that's AOE. That's true. That's true. But yeah, at this point, it could just be fully upgraded mass hunters. In either case, Voyeur has an economic advantage. They've got a tech advantage to some degree. They've certainly put Waisha Zhao off mentally. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah, Hi Giselle still has an ex still expansion, still not ready, so not not expanding first, but gets the full economical advantage despite it. With the mind games. And getting a few zip calls and okay, you were right. You re go. Yeah. Alright, early dread sister. I mean, hey, brood out some of the bone stars that can't run away. Also an option. I, I I'm up. really I'm really excited to see where Voyeur goes with this. Yeah, this is a this is a solid game plan that we haven't seen too much of. <laughs> well, especially this scenario of canceling your base, getting the hunting grounds to defend everything perfectly. We haven't seen much of this. To be fair, Zhao does have stock. You can't really see it in the minimap because you can't see it in the minimap, but a little vision there. Like, they're bone stalkers. They got a lot of them, and they can go invisible. Ooh. Solid? Okay, so why does Zhao realizing you gotta deal with... You gotta be dealing with a lot of light units. Though Ikor aren't as anti light as it used to be. Zao's not going to have quite the te the advantage they might think they will. It's still good, especially the speed is, upgrade. But they're but not. Nodivor, Nodivor is not even going for that many mass hunters. He just had yeah, initial 10. Not. And since then, he's been going Icor and Spellcasters. This is. Icors are not the right combination. I mean, they're going Spellcaster. This. Yeah, no. There's a caller going to eat them for breakfast. Okay, here come the mass hunters as he needs some alloy dump. <laughs> he He's using all of his uh, ether on Dread Sisters. Does sisters. he. Did he have the birthing storm is the other question. That's a question that may soon be answered. And no, they're going for the root instead. Zal, a little caught oh. out, drops all behind. And Voyeur, gotta be careful here, losing a few units for very little in return. Zakal, are, are that, where, where are we going? Oops, Oops sorry. <laughs> yeah, with the red harvest, it's uh, like, honestly, any fight you take with red harvest. down. Yeah. Mm. Any fight you take with Red Harvest is generally pretty good as you get the damage from the units and any unit of the dice, yours or her opponents, will get more units for you. And uh, also upgrades. Yeah. Oh, and Big In comes out, which is a good start. More Dread Sisters coming in to help with the fights. Why just out, though, realizing their opponent's gone heavy on tech? That's... What's that going to prompt? That's going to prompt... Well, early air... You see early behemoths or just early thrum? And no air coming in, a doll for totally not aware. Sometimes you might just want to get the bone canopy in case your opponent goes there so you have some counters. True. And don't need to do something with it. And worst case, it just gives you a bit of supply. Costs a bit more ether, but if you're going mostly bone stalkers it, or icors, it doesn't matter all too much. Well, we'll see whether or not that pays off. Voyeur's dress is out, out, out of position. One of them is completely free. Second Ooh. one's running the front lines. All right, root Only coming has through. Root. Yep, that gives Voyeur a little bit of chance to reposition before taking the fight. Coming around the side and just picking off forces here and there. Zhao forced to retreat. Loses, loses units for a Dread Sister, which isn't nothing, but Voyeur expanding behind this. 
has a Zao. Any expansion is pretty powerful. Keeping his economic lead that he's had for a while, but Zhao has the army lead at this point with 22,000 army supply versus army value versus only 1600 for his opponent. It's not the biggest lead, but it does make a difference. Oh, and here come the spiders. Okay. Boy, are really getting into the mid game tech now. Bit of, a, bit of an odd progression, but eh, there you go. Hey, that's Aru for you. You can uh, you can swip and swap a bit against different tech levels. Voyer running into the Zo Zao's hunting grounds. Zao going for the push. Rooting out a couple of the Icors. But oh, Voyer yeah. still for Street. The calls all go down. And big and calls at that. As do the Dread Sisters. Voyer with the Masked Hunters looking for the flank. Zao getting caught out by the tower. Pushed back a bit. Voyer with the incubators. Finding extra pressure. Another offering comes down here. Voyer oh. wants revenge. But Zao... Might Zol was summoned. A way to prevent it. Zol was summoned there, but eliminated immediately. Uh, both spells were kind of not didn't do all that much. Zol didn't get kills. Red Harvest didn't get kills. But for Voyer, it's okay. Nope. He pushed White Days out back while he has the economical advantage with his base, just a slightly bit faster. Has the eight mining compared to only four for Zal. So a decent exchange for for Nolan Voyer. Still a bit behind in army value, but he'll get back up there. He has the extra base, so he can really power it up. Oh yeah. Well. Slowly but surely. Incubators. Yeah, they, certainly have the, they certainly have the tech for it. This is where we might actually see that air unit come in, considering, well, more and more of Voyeur's army is not able to shoot up. So how can it, okay, they end a fourth early on. Sneaky yep. fourth, too. Voyeur pushing in. Zhao, some decent choke point Bloodwell stuff to work with. But, oh, coming in one at a time. Root comes in, birthing from the top of that. Ooh, Voyeur... Man. Voyeur looking to take advantage where they can off the Kittle. And it's paying off. Beers popping around. Zhao going for this round. Voyeur just kiting Zhao back. Gets the Lisha Power on their own. There's the Rain of Blood. Voyeur oh. countering with Zul Summon. Wait, right, Zhao going to full Zul Summon. Voyeur and looking for a bit of a surround. Takes out Zul immediately to stop the damage. Going for the flanks here. Another Birthing Storm drops the back storm. lines. And this is where it's going to really pay off. Voyeur getting a ton of Kittle summons in Zhao's back line. Yeah, as they retreat, the Kittles come out and... Oof. Well, at least I'm sad that units, even if they don't uh, contribute to the fight, as Zhao didn't have to keep fighting there. No, they did not. They did actually get an advantage, and they do have an extra expansion. Voyeur's starting to lose momentum. That was a lot of pyre, and... Unfortunately, they lost a lot of units in the meantime. Yeah. Mm. Especially starting out, like, Zhao had... They were coming kind of one at a time, and Voyeur was able to kite reasonably well. It Just... Honestly, even that early bit of Zul Summon, or a little bit of Zul Summon, did start turning things around a bit. Yeah, those power fights are always a bit crazy, deciding what's the better spell. The ultimate does some damage, but Zul can... Zul on her own does... <laughs> Just forcing your units to concentrate on her instead of the rest of the fight. It's well, yeah, because if you don't concentrate on Zul, then Zul starts picking up trophies off the of units dying, and then gets that much stronger and harder to deal with. Yeah, every single time she gets summoned after that. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, Not to mention, whole... with enough trophies, you get great hunt. Mm. Oh, and here comes the ancient fights. Voyeur going for the ancient drops, called Birthing Storms, pushing Wises out back. She's looking for the ancient damage. Wises out coming around the back, dropping a ton of red... Red Plagues. Oh, Boyer doesn't plague really so care, but is losing a lot of units in the process. Zulling someone as well. Zhao. Oh, man. Might be pushing off Voyeur. Voyeur definitely trying to hold on, right but Zul was just perfect summoned. timing. Voyeur looking for extra damage. And it's just not enough. They can't hold. Yeah, he has to Zhao. pull back. Zhao gets it. See, that's the issue of these ancient fights, right? You want to kill the ancient, but as you do, as you're contrary on it, your opponent can just kill your units and then gain the lead for the next fight. And with that, Zal takes the ancient, gets a lot of power. And they're pretty much equal in power count. With 100 power, they're making a pretty big difference. You have to use summon Zal, so it comes back to pretty equal for him. But just denying it from his opponent is a big story there. That is a... I mean, that is a big deal for Voyeur, because now Zal... They can do whatever they want. A great hunt, they can summon more Zol. 
Like, if Boyer had managed to take that, it would have been a quick Rain of Blood, possibly Rain of Blood Red Harvest combo, and Zhao would have had no answer. They couldn't have summoned Zal or anything. But now Voyeur, if they advance, they're advancing into more Zul. More damage, more shenaniganry that Zhao's been playing this whole game with. Yeah, both players have been playing such a great game so far, both decisive in the right moments and pulling back at the right time, not overcoming to any fight. And ooh, an Aculoke finally comes out. Okay, that's going to be tricky to deal with. Voyeur having no detectors currently. And you no. just have to run away from the Aculoke shots. You see him coming, you run. And sure. love this from Zhao, getting... A Before small a giant force. army. Like, to actually move, to maneuver this force away from the Akalic is not a trivial task. Okay, here comes the counterattack, and... Oh okay, yeah, that's what I want to see from Wedges. I'll just move yep. the rest of his army away as he just slightly harasses. Yeah, he gets his, his whole opponent's army out of position and can take down maybe a base. That's when you have to yep. be careful, though. You don't want to get stuck. But as the whole army is on the other side... Uh, Voyeur seems to have clued in. They seem to have realized, wait a sec, I'm pulling my entire army out of position. I might want to make sure that my base is protected. And Zhao gives it away. Goes to the tower. We'll be able to take it out, but that gives Voyeur all the time in the world to regroup. Why does Zhao force a retreat? Goes for a bit of harassment. Voyeur not going to split. Realizing, you know what? I've got the army advantage now. Gets Ooh, the Akalic! Shot. But the Akalic shot went right in the middle. A lot of units damage from it. Now, it's a question of what's the... Okay, Rain of Blood dropping again. That's HP regen, it'll help. And Voyeur going through. Two Birthing Storms dropping. That is going to lead to a snowball advantage for Voyeur as they push through this Bone Stalker force. Zhao losing more and more, turning half of them into Kittle. The rest of them go down that much faster as a result. And Voyeur able to take out a base, losing one of their own, but base for base and a significant army trade. Oh, that, yeah, that was great for Voyeur. Oh, that was amazing for Voyeur. Completely nullified everything. It made perfect use of the Birthing Storms. And, but, but, oh, but man. I'm so happy why Giselle slid his army because of it. He's 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 not out of it. If he no, they, lost, still, they got just, a base. They killed a base. Like, this is even yeah, exactly. still. If he hadn't lost a base, it would have been in a lot of trouble. No, he just has an army deficit. That's not too bad. You can come back from that from a good fight. He has the hunting grounds as well. And faster reinforcement, yep. he might just be able to come back. Oh, the incubator's uh, too far up front. Voyeur, a little out of position here. Gotta be careful once again, going into the fight. Do we have more Birthing Storms on deck? Voyeur oh, not the dropping. concave is good for not a Voyeur. Oh, the concave is amazing for not a Voyeur. As White is now getting caught up inside their own choke point. Now the Birthing Storm drops. Voyeur going all out. As Zhao goes for a bit more of a surround, but again, as the units start dropping, Voyeur gets stacking advantages from the Kittle. Oh man, those Kittles coming in are just so clutch in this fight. And Zhao is forced back, but the Kittles, once they die, they died or not back. And he can push forward Why Zhao, pushing forward with all his units, keeping his behemoths alive, just barely keeping one alive. Oh, that's right. Oh, Voyeur might be over. Voyeur is overextending at this point. Reinforcements do come in, but the positioning is still not great. The calls can't easily get to the front lines. The Incubators and the Kittle are the main target. Why does Zhao? Look, focusing on the back lines, taking out some Incubators here and there, but still, Voyeur, that early advantage, it's it's still becoming a problem. Oh yeah, that early advantage really just compounded through the whole game. And he's coming through a smaller troll point, but it doesn't matter when we have a better tech army. And we're just about to lose the second base as not a Voyeur's arm reinforcements coming through. Now it's two bases to three. Favor, not a Voyeur. And Voyeur's reinforcements. Second wave of reinforcements has come in, and looks like Voyeur might be splitting the army to take out that third over to the southwest, leaving Wajazel with just one base. Yeah, just enough to defend yeah, this that's... part. Half his yep. army. That is fine. Voyeur's army is in position, coming around the side, and Wajazel going for the surround, but simply doesn't have the numbers to deal with this stuff. Going for the tech, try yeah. takes out a couple of He's at least one of the Dread Sisters, but it's just... Voyeur has too many forces. Regrouping yeah, takes that out. The third is still threatened. Yeah, he's just in great position this whole time as well. Can set up an arc and everything as Hyjazal just tries to push up and try to survive. That's what Jal's known to do. He doesn't give up. He doesn't surrender. He's going to fight till the bitter end. And, uh, the bitter end is, is approaching slowly but surely as Nod of Voyeur just keeping his grasp on the game. Uh, reinforcing, but of course, Zhao's not completely out yet. They're not, but it's getting harder and harder every time they go in for the fight. It's just another, like, Voyeur drops Birthing Storm, and Zhao 
Like, that means they can't afford to lose units or everything snowballs against them. And as it stands, voyeurs double the army value, triple the population count. And an extra base on top of that. But hey, why is that playing it smart? Was it Behemoth in the sign? Like, just in a little dead spot, making it harder for voyeurs to deal with. So, hey, free damage onto voyeurs' army. Not a bad idea. <laughs> And the side is not a warrior, doesn't want to push in too strongly, so we'll expand behind this just to make sure that no matter what, he doesn't just die from this. Resonance are say that up. they do... Oh, they're they're pulling. Trying to... Trying to get... Trying to bait Voyeur out, and Voyeur kind of in a bit of an awkward position for them. Voyeur. Yep, they got the bait. White is out, took the bait, and Voyeur coming around the side. Getting the surround on these bone stock On these... Yeah, on the bone stalkers, taking the resonance behind that. Nothing available to protect it. Residents go down. Zao loses all of their Bone Stalkers. Army is down as Voyeur pushing in with only Zol to threaten them. Voyeur does not care. Goes in hard, and that could very well be it. Third expansion goes down. Voyeur pushing in to take out the main, and Wajah Zao has very little to stop them. Yeah, the two behemoths at the top still alive and still coming in, but Zal knows knows it's over. And will concede the win to No Other It is 1-1 in this winner's semifinals. And well played to Voyeur for that too. In early that early tech put or early tech play with the early Dread Sisters, I wasn't sure I was gonna go with that because you know early Dread Sister it, it, it takes a while to get the resource you need to get other than Root. And I mean Root was helping, but Birthing Storm as we saw was just a game changer. Like that Went from a stalemate to Voyeur just snowballing into Zhao's base. <laughs> Still, you're not a Voyeur says, who needs micro and can just toss bodies at the problem? And I'm not sure if he's just, okay, getting more units or just setting more kiddos to their death and no, that, spawning that's Mal death. No, that's just Mal in a nutshell. Yeah. Mal no, just yeah. has a fun gameplay pattern, right? Just get more units out there. Just get the fights in. Whew. Oh, oh, up yeah. to game three. And which map are we heading for for the final Mal's game of this series? Now. That is up to Zoe. Yep. Oh, Sorry. magical point reminding that, yeah, the amount of kills spawn depends on the supply of the unit that dies. It's, I believe, one kill per two supply. But, yeah, yep. so for the Bone Stalker, it's just one. But for the bigger units, like the Behemoths, I think are like three. And, they're, yeah, it's just it. But still, even just one kill, like one Bone Stalker to one kill is huge. That, that was a really good game for totally not of what, War 1-1 one, one right now. And, yep. uh, yeah. Yeah, after that first game, Zao was just so dominant that it seemed like, it, it just seemed like Zoe would, would be winning, running for him, but now Total Lonover are just coming back and showing that, no, he's not someone that we can forget about. He has been playing yep. this game well for a while, too. And, yeah, 1-1. One, one, not of order, showing his medal, and whoever, uh, whoever can win the next game against, whoever wins this goes against, goes against Santa, and that will be another banger of a game. Yeah, in the meantime, we have Skix having been knocked out by King Kiko, or Mr. Kareem. So Mr. Kareem has gotten a tournament win. Yeah. They've actually gotten tournament wins before, but they certainly have one this time. Yep. So uh, Skix so Skix and uh, King Kiko, Mr. Kareem, both have their tournament win. As I don't think anyone hasn't, hasn't taken the game today as well, so that's pretty nice for this tournament. Skix, yeah, Skix took games of Swamp Stacks. Yeah, so far. Yep. So far, it's Santa Claus is the only one who hasn't lost a game, but yeah, everyone's everyone's won a game at least once. Yep. Santa keeps on their strike. It's going to be a tough challenge whether he fights the YJs out or not a Voyeur. Both of them decent players. Ah, oh, man. As we head into our next game, we'll be picking up Canyon once more. A Canyon, fun map, a lot of roundabout ways to get to your opponent. You just got to keep your eyes open on where they're coming from. I mean, it worked fine for Zell last time. Yep. Yeah, just, just find the right choke points, the right attack pass. But really, Zhao just went based on a better timing attack. And we'll see if this timing attack can work again. Yeah, mm. I don't know. I mean, that, like, massacre timing, it was more that the response wasn't great. But even then, Zhao wasn't particularly aggressive with it. Voyeur had more chances than probably should have. Oh, yeah. He had a... Oh, it was just a, a perfect push by YJ Zhao. And we'll see if he can do it again. But of course, it depends what Nod of Warrior decides to go for. I know Zhao is sticking to Zhao as he's been enjoying her gameplay. Uh, but so far, not a voyeur has been taking both, has been doing a bit mm -hmm. of both. So, gonna be heading to Canyon. So, are they gonna be for some cheese now for game three? Game three is always a bit more exciting. You know that this is the game is on the line. 
they can go for whatever they want. And uh, I'm just curious what they're heading for. And this time, maybe Zhao won't be a won't cancel his base quite as early as he did in last game when he sees his opponent going for the cheese. That's true, because that was a big thing that turned that gave away a huge advantage early on. Yeah. Oh, it was a, such a huge advantage. He goes for the expand first, and you know when you go expand first, you just lose all the other advantage like earlier, earlier ether, earlier map control. He lost all those advantage and then yep. even canceled it. Oh man, that was just a rough way to start the game. It's not of order. Got the advantage of getting map control of early units. Uh, and then got the advantage, advantage, advantage off mind games. They scared their opponent into yeah. into surrendering their expansion. Yeah, that I'll was just, yeah. Yeah. that was huge. Yeah, I'm worried I should be thanking uh, Santa and Magical probably for training of Zal and just teaching him to be scared of those attacks and all those rushes. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exploiting the conditioning. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I need to cancel my base if he does this because or else I just die. It's like, yep, that is the proper response. And then he didn't put the expansion just after the scout died. Darn it. Just got to yeah. keep the scout alive. Well, lessons learned. But again, we are on Canyon. So. Yeah, back to a map that I'm assuming why Giselle just enjoys a bit more. They generally do well on it. Well, it's probably the map they've practiced a lot on. Yeah. So, totally not aware if he wants to win. He probably needs to go for something like, oh, you know, Lost Province and just hope that why Giselle didn't practice as much as not aware has been there a bit longer than him. So could have practiced when that was the map? Uh, no, 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 don't count on that. Why does that was grinding like heck when when Lost no. Province is the main map? Oh, really? I thought he came a bit after that. Oh, they did. But when they came in, Lost Province was still the main map. The other maps hadn't really been considered no, good okay. enough to play on. Well, okay. Even though they didn't change all that much, they're just... No, it was just at the time, Lost Province was the map. Anyone, yeah. Everyone just wanted to play Lost Province. They didn't want to yeah. play Embargo or uh, Fool's that's Bay. Strategy, that's strategy players for you, huh? They don't like changing it up. They're like, nah, I'm, I'm good for that. We don't need to change. Like, no, you want change. You want all the change in the world. No, they're typically very risk averse. Yeah. Players, we're typically very risk averse. Yeah, strategy game like, players are typically very risk averse. Yeah, it worked. Why would I change now? It's like, yeah, that's Yeah, sense. exactly. Hey, so we're having a rematch of last time. Not of Warrior sticking with Malakas. He won with it. Why would he switch? Yeah. I mean, why well, go back to Ajari? That yep. did not work out for him last time. Heading for Alter first into into um, into Ether. So same build so far. Which I like. I like yeah. these more aggressive builds, really. Oh, double Ether this time though. Last time was only one Ether, so he can be it can be a bit more dangerous. Why does out expands after Ether, so non-committal on either way he knows how to defend this accomplish oh. man magical and santa claus kind of disputing your thing about conditioning it's not that you were you told why is that that's the response it's that that seems like that's the response that why is learned yeah exactly but hey they're maybe not for that push but there are a lot of pushes where if you don't just cancel your thing you're gonna die so right Unless you tell me you can defend every single push, every single one base push with uh, with the expanded line. Okay, well, fine then, but I feel like sometimes you just gotta cancel it. <laughs> could be wrong, though. Frontiers, I think there's actually a reasonable argument you could set up for, like, again, build up a choke point out of buildings. Not so much for Aru, mind you. Mm. But if you could, then, yeah, that does provide you a little bit of room. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, why does that again is a very risk averse player, so I'm not surprised that they go for the cancel expansion and go for the attack instead. Yeah, I, I could see I, I could have seen him die to it a few times. <laughs> and say, oh okay, I guess solution is to cancel the base, because that's what it was for this thing. I'll just apply it here as well. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Actually yeah. he was playing he was playing in the pl pillar push era as well. They and were in the pillar push era, if you someone proxies, the response is I'm pretty cancel sure it was to cancel, yeah. yeah it was. Yeah. That was the only thing. Well, that was really early on when the when the pillar was overtuned. Yeah. Uh, but yes, that was the response. Cancel your natural expansion and then just fold back in your main. Oh wow. Okay, I'm not used to this one. A blood well oh. at the front of the base. And they're not Oh, I see. They're going for basically the <laughs> Well, I guess fast expand off of like Aerovore fast expand or Omnivore <laughs> fast expand yeah well it's great defensive too especially with the blood well healing up your units on top of it yep uh, uh, but yeah not of war not heading for the super aggressive build either it expanded behind it just got a bit of tech up faster wants to get that uh, wants to get that faster speed on his mass hunters as soon as possible but not get overrun by the bone stalkers and they will be probably fine 
I mean, certainly the numbers are working out better for Boyer. And if they have they have the neurosite, so they have the upgrades, then they are golden. Yep. Icor's out on YJ's out to deal with those mass hunters. So at this point, uh, not where it will need to get some Zakals just to split, take out that splash damage. He doesn't need to, but it always helps to, to, to not die yeah, to the no, splash it does, damage. Yeah, no, it does block off the Icor's pretty well. Mm, still, why does that... Yeah, this is a very defensive game. Why does that what hyper defensive sometimes just delays your type of push, especially if your opponent does doesn't end up attacking you. Yeah, and especially since now again early as the calls come in, so Zycor is going to have a harder time. But also, what is what is that doing? Is, it, is that a tech push of some kind? It's got to be a tech push of some kind. Really not okay, sure. Okay, thrones the calls coming in. Fair enough. Fair enough. A bit of units of everything. It's going to come down to. How they position themselves, Icors need to shoot the Mass Hunters and not the Zakals. Uh, but if you just A move into your opponent, you won't really get control of either thing. Warriors positioning a bit better. Oh, it's going to be tricky. It's really going to come down to where they actually encounter each other. Why does that? Oh, I like this. Why does that on the hill? Ooh. Yeah, you can just catch the opponent and just jump on him. There they and go. Here we go. Focusing down, Voyeur's Zakal, and takes out one. Voyeur on the retreat, offering to assist on the retreat. Well, watch this out, did drop Zal, and Voyeur, if they're able to just run off, then that Zal is going to be wasted. Actually, this is a great advantage for not a Voyeur. Just run away, right? You don't have to fight against Zal, and Zal will be wasted. Yeah, fire. deny trophies. Oh, but he's going for the fight now. And uh, that's oh, true. even Zal oh, gets, the, gets it. Got Pyre, got a couple trophies. But oh, yes, that, that advantage, that, okay. Uh, yeah, that, okay. It okay. It was okay. So now you just got to risk your power to get Zol out, and at least he forced his opponent to run back home. Wanted a bit more than that, but that's okay. Oh, 50 power from it, though. Gets complete map control, 50 power. And behind it, oh. Well played. But okay. again, Ooh. yep, again we have the Red Veil. Again, we very very well may have early Dread Sister. I think Voyeur, looking at their what they're building, they might have learned the lesson that you've got to get Birthing Storm up before you get Striking Dress Sisters. Yeah, Birthing Storm was uh, was very, very strong when you no, had No, never mind. It. No, there's the Dress Sisters, so hopefully for Voyeur, they have the follow-up. Well, it's not too bad, right? You're still getting them early to get the mana up so they don't use their blood to uh, cast their spells. They might be able to get more spells up just getting them faster. That seems to be the plan. Yeah, really dishing with it. So we saw when, when Boyer had about three or four Dread Sisters, it was death. Like, why just I was getting all their army overlapped by Birthing Storms, and that basically did them in. <laughs> yeah. So do keep in mind, like, we have two Dread Sisters now. If Boyer can keep those alive, then why just I was going to have a really tough time pushing into his Boyer's army? Yeah, both players heading for a, a third about the same time, so really playing a very similar game here. Game of Patience. Game of Patience, uh, waiting for the opportun best opportunity, possibly waiting for the Ancient. That's still four, three minutes away, so hopefully they fight a bit before that. That'd be a, a, a long way, a game of staring each other. Yeah, and looks like Voyeur does agree. If he has Burfing Storm, he can he, he can push some fights up, but it does seem like Wedgel just has so many more units. Or at least more Zakals, which tank okay. all the damage. All right, goes in. Gets a bit of a flank on, on Zhao. Rooting out Voyeur. Looking to find a bit more of a flank, but Zhao able to turn to it. Surround mm. and Voyeur doesn't want to go for it. Yeah, he used up his spells. He doesn't have mana left. There's not really a point to keep fighting at that point. No, mm. just just hold on to it. I mean, you can cast from health, but then your dress sisters are more vulnerable and eh. Not yeah. much point. <laughs> not quite worth it. Uh, yeah, both just content defending his... Or at least Zhao is very content just defending his turret. He doesn't want to push more forward with it. Nope. And that's that's wise. Voyeur's going to be a bit tough to deal with right now. Zhao shifting off to Underspine. Zakal, very much... Okay, wants a call, wants the extra overgrowth from Underspine. Makes sense. I Means Zakal are going to be tough to kill with if they have overgrowth on. Or yeah. shields, more more colloquially. But yeah, that... If they're upgraded, the Zakal... Why does Zhao will be able to last longer if they're on Rootway? Yeah. Oh, and here comes the push. Ooh, Red comes. Harvest comes out immediately. Red Harvest, Birthing Storm inside. 
Zol gets summoned as well. Gets solid flanking hits from Zol. And Voyeur getting knocked out of position, baited by Zol to take them out, losing but losing a significant chunk of their army in the process. Dress is still around, but one does go down. The second one is threatened. Goes for the root, not the birthing storm. Doesn't do a lot of damage, and that's forcing the retreat. Why is out able to take the center just in time for the ancient? That was a great well, well, minute and a half. Now, having to concave this whole time as well. Uh, getting his opponent to try and save, chase Zol. He saves Zol at the very end. So doesn't even lose it. And Dolan Warrior lost a lot of DPS trying to chase Zol. That yeah, just didn't that die. Ran, running right into Zao's army to try to take out Zol was overextending. And that worked out perfectly for Zao. And Zao's going to be happy with that. <laughs> Behind on the power, but that's fine. He used, he used Zol to win that fight. It's not all about those army win fights. As as Dolan Oliver is forced to just remake his army, remake his... Uh, Dread Sisters at the same time, which is out heading for Behemoths. Behemoths coming out, so the final okay. unit army. We saw how useful Behemoths were in the last game. The last two stayed uh, survived to the very end. Well, this is very much Voyeur going for Mass Kittle. Oh, as he should. Mass yeah. Kittles are beautiful. Which is very much the Malo way to play, or at least a useful Malo strategy. Zal, on the other hand, man, that is a root way heavy strategy. Also, should point out, underspines do slow down units when they hit them. Yeah, and that, that, that can oh, make handy. a big difference in getting in position. Okay, got the, gets the hunting grounds. I'm taking out Rain of Pop in for Voyeur. Drops the drops some birthing storms, but not on a whole lot of units. Now the birthing storm drops a little bit more valuable this time around. Yeah, but more importantly, Zal doesn't have much of an army. Yeah, that Voyeur's army is the real threat. Top of the embiggens the calls. Voyeurs gets the surround on everything. All those behemoths are out of everywhere. Voyeur able to t root out one of the behemoths. And Voyeur cannot save it. One behemoth down. Voyeur able to go in further. Zao. Zao's reinforcements in. Has a second behemoth. Or second and third behemoth as well. The first couple are dead. Voyeur continuing to just push off. Goes to the root. Zao able to dodge it, but Voyeur does have this base to their name. And yeah, that's what he has to do. Just take the small army win and take down something. All right. Zao going oh. this round. Voyeur push back a little bit. Losing one of the front line to deal with this, but do they get the base? They do nail oh. it. Okay, need to be careful not to lose the army now. Needs to keep that Dread army as yeah, alive as possible, the especially oh. the Dread Sisters. That Dread Sisters in the back line, not ideal. Yeah, oh, one goes one down. Nice. Zal summoned to take out the other one, and it goes Oof. down as well on top of an incubator. Voyeur struggling here. Red Harvest drops, but man, why does Zal is looking a little bit iffy? Famous from Zal on the side, able to just push this back. The offering is up, and even with Red Harvest, it's still it's still Zal starting to turn this around, getting strong units up the front lines. Yeah. If you can get the behemoth, it might be worth That's it. True. Behemoths are good, are micro perfectly well back. Oh man, uh, yeah. So totally not afford got the base, but at the cost of his of most of his army, Zao has an army advantage. Oh. Of course, not of where it has time to reinforce it, to remake it with all the units coming in. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if that's the plan to, to keep going with it. Ah, little spiders going around. Well, those spiders are... Oops. Yeah, those spiders are ready to rock and roll. As Stone of Order's army finally reunites, he has it reinforced ready for the next push. As Wedges Out might just be heading for his own counterattack, the Teapots could have spotted it as, uh, as they move back. Of course, it's not of our repositioning exactly for that reason. And that repositioning... Oh, is Foyer... Well, Foyer's not entirely... Out of position, but they're not quite forward enough to actually deal with this yet. Yeah, it's kind of forward. Going Seat into the push. Eight. So Zao's gonna be trying to keep their own Red Seers uh, and Behemoths alive. Point. But Voyeur getting stuck in the choke point. Zol on the high ground. Brother Storm around the back lines. This is what we saw the last time. Few good kills will start a will start a cascade of Birthing Storm Kittle. Oh man, those Birthing Storms are so powerful. Zao's and there so it is. Right now. Root from Zao's Red Seers is able to hold Voyeur's army back enough to keep the Behemoths alive. As long as some reinforcements come in, 
But Zhao's army is a bit split up. Looking for a surround, but not close enough. Voyeur's army able to get the DPS density to push back Zhao. And here comes the Ancient now. Who will get the Ancient? Not Voyeur has a has a small has a has a small lead to begin with. What would be enough? Voyeur's reinforcements come in to help deal with it. Doesn't seem like yep. he want that he has enough that he thinks it's worth it. And it looks like you're no. Zhao goes for it. They figure they they could still use it. They have been relying heavily on Pyre for Zol. That's well, just not enough. And Voyeur takes it. Continues back onto Zol's army. Zol's only a handful of Bone Stalkers is the call. A couple of Red Seers as well, but they are oh, not Red Plaguing. Oh man, all the units have been plagued to death, though. There's only shields left on most of these Mass Hunters. That's true. But but even with just shields, they, they do just as much damage shooting, and they were able to take out the rest of, of Zal's army. It's going to have to deal, use a reinforcement deal with this. Or at least to defend. Voyeur up a base off of all of this. Up a base, up a bunch of pyre. Yeah, I was has... able to establish his fourth. F4 and yep. fourth on top of it. I know, it's just... Go for the aggression. I'm granted, this is actually probably one of the safer for us if you look at how it's laid out. Like, for reinforcements? Yeah, definitely for reinforcements. If you want to be aggressive, yeah. it's a better base, as you can just keep pushing forward. If you want, you can maybe put some, some aerovores or, or omnivores to help defend whatever push comes up. But yeah, great staging round to go for the next push. Mm. Which uh, he seems ready to go for as he's very far ahead on his uh, on his army value. And yeah, relying heavily on the kill for front liners though is wedges out much stronger front line off of all those calls. Voyeur's gotta be careful with the omnivores. Zhao, well, they started out defensively. That has not changed. Oh, I like this from Zhao getting that defensive posture, getting a bit of an arc on his opponent. His opponent's going to turn over when he jumps in. He'll he'll be out arced, but he can come in and try to figure out a better way to get in. Of course, uh, Voyeur still has a lead in just economy in general, so he doesn't have to push into this. He doesn't have to force it. No, well, they don't. They can just kind of hang out. In fact, probably a good idea to heal up their units. Like get, a, get a Blood Well or two, or get, get back to a tower, or just build a tower there. Because that's that lack of health is... It doesn't seem like much, because... I mean, okay, it's... It's easier to kill, but it's also the red the Dread Sisters have less to cast from. Yeah. He is getting his fifth base up and running behind this. And what I'd like from Nautivore is for him to tech up. Get his own behemoths, get something else. Ooh, and here comes the fight though. Rate of blood may not even matter. Oh, going in really hard. Goes to the birthing storms, but their front line is right now the masked hunters. Doing an okay job, but Zhao just has the surround getting getting the damage done. Voyeur's tech units are pretty vulnerable. But Birthing Storm Cascade may very well come through. He needs that Cascade to happen now if he wants a chance at this. His army and it, and it does. Just oh, there it goes. barely happens. There we go. Birthing oh. Storm coming in, saving the day as Voyeur, after losing half their army, is able to push in, root out the behemoths, take out both of them, and now Zhao has no army to speak of in the front lines. The Omnivore is doing, is doing as much as it can, but just one Omnivore. Oh, but Voyeur's, Voyeur's Dredsters is out of position. One goes down, second one does get pulled back. Yeah, those third are base still, about, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, third base about to get taken out again. And that's going to be very hard for YJ's now. He had a better army. The fight started so well for him, but once the Burfing Storms came in and killed all his units, turned them to Quiddles, eh, his army just evaporated. The rest of it just mm -hmm. went cascading down, and he just died. Well, there's not a whole lot of Birthing Storm left. Very, very yeah, little mana or health for Voyeur's Dread Sisters. Yeah, he can't wait for his reinforcements, and the reinforcements are coming in a large wave that isn't stopping. Doesn't have to jump into the plague. Yeah, don't maybe don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're almost uh, they're very low on HP. Yeah, that's true. Oh, secret base from YJ's. Hey, that that's, that's how you stay alive. That is gonna be handy. That's how you stay alive. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, but Nodvor, does he want to push in here? That's a choke point. Choke point with other buildings and an omnivore. And, well, he's pushing And they got it. It after army rooted. And they got plagued. Oh, Zhao might be able to turn this around. There's just so much more AoE on their side. Going in the defense, just f funneling Voyeur's forces through this choke point. And Zhao... Will, okay, starting to pick away at Voyeur's forces. Trying, uh, he's trying. Give me enough. Oh, it's not it a may not be enough though. Zhao just doesn't have that many that many forces. 
Yeah, but they're doing worse. damage, but the Kittle are starting to come in. It's starting to become that much harder for Zhao to get meaningful hits in, and Voyeur taking out building after building in the natural expansion. And even a reinforcement's coming in to help out. Yep. And that's when you know it's over. The reinforcements are jumping onto the battle. White Jail's reinforcements are a bit closer, but there's so few of them. And that might be Voyeur taking it. Yep. Zhao got jumped just in time before they got their army back up. Voyeur. Solid timing on that attack, and that should be the last stand for Wajah Zhao here. Doing his best what he has. And yeah, here comes Zhou one last time. Gets a lot of kills. We'll get her trophies. Uh, but trophies don't matter when all you have left is, is Zhou. As the Red Harvest comes in to get even more Kiddos in. <laughs> and Zhou leaves the field as Zhao will have to forfeit very soon. As uh, his, 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 all mean, his production builders are getting eliminated. Yeah. I don't think we have to forfeit, but it'd be polite to if you're pretty sure you're not going to make it. There you go. Last buildings. He wants his uh, last six Zakals to come out. Maybe a bit more. And yeah, here comes the Zakals. Hey, Zakals are powerful. They can take a lot of hits. They can. And a lot of Boyer's units are quite weak. Yep. They took a lot of hits. They just died after those hits happened immediately as they spawned. <laughs> Well, that is that. Voyeur takes it 2-1. to one, And yeah. we move on to the winner's finals. And great play from Voyeur. Really showing off his strategy with Mala. Didn't work out with Ajari, and Why Giselle just played so well with his Mala. But not Voyeur just didn't want to get shown up and showed how powerful he is of a Mala player. Takes it 2-1 on the reverse there. Mm -hmm. As not Voyeur heads up to the winner's semifinals against Santa Claus. Yep, and Why Giselle will be... Heading into the loser semifinals against King Kiko. They'll be passing through Swampstag because Swampstag has to leave. So King Kiko is gonna have the is gonna have the fight in the loser semis, and then we will catch up with them at the losers finals after Santa and Nana Voyeur have their match, which is starting now-ish. I'm curious what the opening map is intended to be. Okay, Santa versus Nana Voyeur. Uh Nana Voyeur is hungry, wants to get beaten up fast, so we'll see how that ends up happening. As we head on to our wedding semifinals, Santa wants the spiders to come in powerful and uh, take the win here. Yeah. Will it be spiders versus spiders? It very well might be on Frontiers, I believe, as uh, Santa does believe. So. Frontiers! Okay, because Frontiers is full of spiders, apparently. It is. Uh, as Santa plays it, he makes as many spiders as he can. And if not of where it keeps on this trick of playing Mallet, it might just be even more spiders coming forward. Indeed. All right. So of course, whoever wins this gets the advantage in game in the winners in the grand finals of only having to win two games or being up one, depending on how you count it. All depends. See, we're getting ready to jump into the game as Nodvor and Santa ready to go in. Nodvor getting hungry as it is 8 p.m. and it is. Europe time, and he has not had supper yet. After this, it's, yeah, so this is best of three, and then we'll have a best of one for the losers' finals. Whoever will lose this against the winner of Weiss is out and Mr. Kareem. As I recall correctly, actually started about the same time. So that's kind of cool. Yep. Can't wait to see how uh, Santa, not of where, asked him to finish it quickly. So will he be able to find a strategy that just kills not of where? Not of where is not someone know. to die easily. Not of where is not someone to give up easily either, so. No, they're not. And they've been doing really well in the last few games, just pulling, pulling off quite a lot of malice shenanigans. Which, it's hard to cheese through sometimes. Yep, Although, to be fair, Quido. Mala is not the strongest of the early game. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why he gets up that he gets that offering as fast as possible to not get right. delayed too fast. Too bad. It's a really great build that's well thought out against uh, when you know you're playing against Bone Stalkers and Bone Stalkers. You can take out your early units. Mm. Yeah, it's a good way to take care of it. Yep. Because not aware. Yeah. Bone Stalkers are just. I like Bone Stalkers in their place right now. Like. They're better in Mass Hunters, but once the Mass Hunters get offering, they're back to being pretty equal with Mass Hunters, a small advantage. And then, uh, then, the, then the game goes on and they keep changing a bit. Getting their stealth can make the advantages not necessarily the best for straight up fights, but they're just decent straight up fights, anyways. Bone Stalkers? They're better in straight up fights than. If, mass even with offering Mass No, with, no, no, no. With, with offering yeah. Mass Hunters are better, but without offering yeah. Bone Stalkers are better. Yeah, I was talking That's about the later thing. stage of the game. Later yes, stage, later of, the stage of the game, you do rely on ambush in order to get the extra damage. Yep, you definitely need to get in. Let's see if it's going to be a spider battle with both players taking Mala. Oh, that's right, because Santa apparently did do a little bit of a Mala 
like actually did blood well on top of all of the all the kittle, which yeah, I, was... which would be great because the thing with blood wells is that, well, like as you said, units die near them give malapire, which mm. means that then you can do more red harvest, which means you get more kittle, and always more kittle. But kittles are not spiders, or are they? They're not, right? It's just incubators or spiders. Yeah, the incubators are spiders. The kittles are just other kinds of bugs. We we sure love our bugs. We sure do. Especially and unless they're in Andre's stomach, because then the well, I mean, in no, his stomach, the bugs fine. are fine. It's the it's lamb and boar or whatever or chicken. I don't know what it is. Something he's allergic to. Oh wow, uh, that food that he loves. He is his favorite food. It's the only food that if I serve it, he'll like eat it as I'm serving it. But is it like it, lamb based cat food or is it just lamb? Well, wild boar and lamb is the flavor. Okay, it's the flavor. Yeah, I was wondering if like you just got some lamb and just cut it up for him and just gave it to him like that. I would be pretty bloody. I mean, I'm sure Andre I imagine would I imagine some shepherd nearby would be very pissed off. That too. I'm not yeah. sure Andre would be take on, able to take on a sheep on his own. He'd love to eat it, but I'm not sure he'd be. Uh, maybe? I don't know. You think? Uh, Andre's more powerful than I thought then. I mean, he's, he's a big cat. It's probably about the same size as a sheep, to be honest. That's a, that's a big cat. That's a... That's what is a, it, 13? Uh, well, his healthy weight would be 12 or 13 pounds. He's a little underweight right now, but... Healthy weight would be 12 or 13 pounds. See, I assumed the sheep would be, you know, about 50 to 60 pounds. So I'm just like, huh, Andre's pretty strong. Uh, Maybe I'm just know, wrong. I don't know big. my measures. Well, a lamb's definitely not going to be that big. All oh, right, the lamb. Yeah, because lamb is a yeah. baby sheep, right? Exactly. No, Andre could jump that. Even Andre. But would he? Is Andre is Andre that type of fighter? I have no idea. Apparently, he didn't get along with the other cast at the shelter, so maybe. Oh. Okay, that's why he that's why he got taken out. Well, to you. When I got him, he was they put him in a section on his own, so he wasn't oh, with wow. other cats. Wow. Okay. But yeah, he loves confused. humans. He's great with other people. He's just oh, terrible with cats. I yeah, know my cat saw one other cat one time, just got all hissy at it. It's like, ooh, okay, we're yeah. not showing you other cats again. We could try. We could try introducing them nicely, you know, through a door or something, so they yeah. can hate each other from afar. But they're like, yeah, it's okay. We won't get another cat for now. I can't anyway. Like, I'm only allowed to have one cat. Oh, okay, and the apartment rules. Well, yep. Mm. Yeah, strata rules are one dog or one cat. Oh, how many goldfish? Yeah. There's no limit. Oh, okay, how about mice? I also know limit, but I imagine that the practical limit is zero because they don't want to have mice. Okay, you know, I was wondering, you know, if you have a snake, are there practical limits on snakes? I don't think they thought that through. Because then you can have a snake farm to so feed the snake. So the thing snake. is that there's no, there's no practical limit, but there's also no registration form for snakes. Oh, okay, so like you, you can have as many as you want. As a cat. Okay, so you can have as many as you want. Legal. Sure, let's go with that. Yeah, that, that's how law works. You can do what you want if no one catches you. Ain't no rule. Yeah, airbud rules. There's there no rule go. against it. You can do it. Exactly. That's how we like life. That's uh, <laughs> that's how this whole war started here between Nautivore and Sand. It's like, ah, I knew what yeah, I want. Ain't, yeah, ain't no do. rules as a snake you can't play immortal. Mm. They don't say it. You can do it. Yep. And Nautivore, going back to Zajari roots and getting to fast expand. All right. Well, that's... A curious choice, but then again, on this map, it's Orsum has a lot of strong air. Or sorry, Orsum. Ajari has a lot of strong cross, has a lot of strong air, and bam, there's a lot of dead spots on this map that air is very useful in. Well, Nautivoyer already knows that Santa is heading for incubators, right? Santa pretty much declared yeah. he just wants spiders. So, how do you prepare against that? How do you deal with it? Let's see if Nautivoyer found a plan. Eh, I don't air, know. Air I mean, air seems like a good choice. A little tough on this map, though. Or is that map on this new patch, though? Because it takes, like, your four buildings in before you start getting any air units. And quarters are pretty good, but mass hunters are still anti-air in some ways. Well, to be yep. fair, you need a lot of mass hunters to deal with. Warren. Warrens are pretty tough. Yeah, guys. but if you have the Dread Sisters off of upgrading your mass hunters, you also have Root. Mm. Yeah, then you can deal with them. Does Burfing Storm work on air units? And I if think it does, so. How do they birth? Do you just like drop out of the sky and just start attacking people? I guess they do. I guess so. I yeah, mean, you know, like ants. They? Yeah, because ants can drop them from pretty high and they'll survive. So yeah, the same they... thing with kiddos. Yeah. It's really a question of, of weight versus air resistance. Yeah, the kiddos are so and small. That's the speed which hit the ground. Yeah, kiddos must be about the size of a dog, I guess. Well, okay, a cat. Bigger than a cat. 
I'd have to define what type of dogs, but I'm not good enough for that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how big they're supposed to be. Oh. Or, like, if the idea is we have one kill to represent a, a tiny swarm of them. I don't know. Oh, not if we missed the two scouts. Double scout and make sure his opponent expanded, and Santa will be happy to see. He did, so he can keep going along his merry way towards incubators. Bugs. As he's yep. More bugs, spiders. Getting his free free E for as fast as possible. Wants to get that tech up. Yep. Bugs that sh bugs that have bugs in their mouth, and when they when they bark, I guess they shoot bees. They shoot bugs at you. Oh yeah. Uh, that sounds like a nightmare. Which is a lot yeah. of what Aru is, I guess. Bit of nightmare fuel to start your day. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe some people like having like some kind of small bug just eat them from the inside and use their body as a source of nutrients to birth out. I do believe psychopaths exist. Yes, that's that's what you were describing, right? Did I get I don't it right? Know that a psychopath would want themselves to die. I feel like they'd want to be the one doing the eating. But you know, whatever. I uh, I guess I just don't understand them in general. No. Oh, and Santa's... Ooh, not of word getting in on a power camp and that Santa is heading for. And yeah, good catch there. Stopping Santa from getting his pirate expansion he wanted. Uh, he wants to pull them back. Doesn't work. And behind us, Santa. Oh, wow. That's not the incubator way. Yeah. What is this, Santa? That's not spiders. That is not going to do... Sp oh, wait, That's no, spiders. Wait, no. Yes, it is. Right, right. It's Amber Room, right. For some reason, yeah. I thought they came out of the altars, but yes. Nope. Nope. The Underspine mm -hmm. does, but that's just the baseline unit. And the I-Course, right. Yes. But that's new. Yeah, things are changing. They never stop. Early gameplay. Yeah. Things are changing. At any rate. Yeah, Magico's talking about how, you know, if they fit in the incubator, the Quiddles can't be that small. I just imagine they're just, like, really stuck in an egg, and when they pop, that's when they become yeah. big. Yeah. So you can have, like, a Labrador or something in your... in the spider belly there, and when you shoot it, it just expands. Yeah, all curled right. up. I mean, they are smaller than the incubators. Yeah. True. And like, so a little bit in the, like, little... That little pod in the back is about Kittle-sized. Yeah, so Kittle, how big is that? How big is a mass hunter? Is that about human size? So the Kittle is I about... Guess. Yeah, so Kittle is about a dog size, a Labrador yeah, or something. Like, yeah. They're just I too chastity of you. The best type of dogs. It's like a Labrador Retriever with a mouth of a tardigrade. Ooh, not of where... Heading for a Absolver push with it. I, I like Absolvers here. They're, they're going to be pretty good at killing off all those uh, Kittles really quickly. I mean, that's a question of whether they get deployed in time. Oh, and here they go. All right, well, hey, you're not wrong. It does actually work out pretty well. Spar able to get us around on that. Voyeur able to get rid of the Pyre Miner. Losing some of the resolve in the process, but hey, one Absolver is still enough to take out all these mass Hunters. Santa Claus not able to get a lot of damage. They still, still have the Incubators. I, I think that turned out alive. okay for Santa, right? He kept all yeah, his tech units alive. Lost they did. Alloy sink. And on the opposite side, would not have lost his two big E for units. And so Voyer lost everything. Yeah, he lost everything, but especially his big E for units. Santa lost everything except his E for units, and now he gets to attack this tower. And With keep his spiders alive. No mana. Yeah. Because bear in mind, units dying is what provides mana for the incubators. Like dead units means more kittle. And more kittles means more happy. Uh, at least for Santa. <laughs> but this might not have worked. It doesn't seem to mind too much. There's not that many units here. He has, like, he has a decent army pushing back, but Santa's not done pushing. Ooh, one incubator does go down. And Voyeur looks to finally secure that air and stabilize, getting a third behind it. Yeah, getting his Sao Shin on top of it. Oh, they're not quite up, but he's heading for it. Santa, for halfway done. Small economical lead for Santa. Which makes sense coming off that uh, early victory, he can just get that base fast. Yeah. Voyeur? Oh, are they going for... Okay. Going for possible push around the back. Remember, Voyeur can just teleport out of here, so solid choice coming around. Gets rid yeah, of the an entire alloy line worth of symbiotes before Santa notices. 
Is he heading for the base or just trying to run out on his own? Uh, they might take whatever damage they can from the looks of it. Yeah. As long as he knows he can run out. Yeah, he needs to, he needs to get ready to teleport out. He's not he's taking the fight. He's getting body oh, blocked no. out of the way. Oh, no. They are not. They're going for Saushin push on their... Uh, really? They're not going to deliver from evil. Okay. Got rid of a few incubators, though. So getting in that. Yeah, and then the Saushin let them escape pretty quickly out of there. A decent fight, but... Yeah, oh, it, it's Dervish are going fight. down. The Dervish all go down. Santa can just push all the rest of the units out of here with no resistance. Yeah, so no... See, at that point, he could have used Salvation, right? That's the way to get out of there. You just force yeah. the fight in your opponent's base. You Salvation out your way out and keep all your units alive. And he had the Pyre for it. He has 240 Pyre. Oh, yeah. Very easily could have taken the Salvation. Well, Santa prepping for a push of their own. Have the Blood Wells. Have everything in place to support get the Blood Wells. Blood. Oh, wow. Three of them. Yeah, I mean, the for same. the Incubators, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That yeah, just replenishes just... the Incubators. More and more Kittle from that. More and more spiders. Never stop the spider push. Nope. Can't stop, won't stop spiders. Here comes the red harvest, so making sure that whatever happens here, he will have an infinite kill and take out this tower no matter what. <laughs> and he just popping from Voyeur to kind of get around. Getting the surround off of, at least onto the masked hunters, but Voyeur just can't deal much damage without the tower nearby. Santa... And beginning the forces, trying to build up as best they can. I mean, they have they have all the blood wolves they need. The incubators are full up. Santa is ready to go. Open in again and ready. Ain't a right comp and oh, oh he has a Voyeur, arc. Ha Voyeur has the arc. Voyeur has Heaven's Aegis. Santa has the kill and Voyeur and has the difference trying to get around. They're loading this around off of this, but they just having to push through so many embiggened units. Voyeur arm is just too small to push this. Getting the reinforcements. Solid flank, but Santa just everything's too close together. Too much DPS. Voyeur repositioning out. Goes for the defense, and Santa cannot get dislodged. And that means Santa Santa has this base on lock. Nice kill in the resonance from Voyeur, though. Nothing else. Get, yeah, he might get a bit trapped, sad to is, but with reinforcement, he just can get the full surround instead. With more kills coming in yeah, from Yeah, Voyeur doesn't have back. enough units. Voyeur's not having enough units to push this back. Reinforcements, come on, reinforcements. Slowly but surely they're coming in, but it's not quite enough. <laughs> no. No, it is not. Third goes down. And Santa now two bases ahead of their opponent. Yeah, as you said, he's taking his four behind it. Reinforcements okay. finally arrive, but only after the third has been lost, and Voyeur taking up the the Bloodwell fire base, but honestly the damage was done. It it set up the incubators, and they did their they did their work. They got rid of the third, and now on to the rest of Voyeur's base. Santa wiping out Voyeur's reinforcements as they leave the base. Yeah, Voyeur turning trying, around. Trying regrouping. to get in position. Incubators mostly don't have much energy left, so you might nope. be able to get in before too many kiddos come in. Heaven Z is dropping as well. Voyeur getting us around on this. Cut. Putting Santa Claus a bit on the back foot, but again, as units die, those incubators build back up. Santa Claus looking for this round to take as many incubators as they can. But there are just so, so many of them. And now with only Sapari left, Voyeur struggling to finish off the last few incubators. Santa able to take out the remaining, the remaining forces. And continue the push. Everything's coming up Santa Claus. Yeah, he just keeps putting on blood wells to get more power, to put down more blood wells, but get more pyre. It's a way to, as... Well, get more pyre and get more mana for the incubators, yeah, which has paid off in spades. Santa Claus just push to push, ends up taking it. Well, that's a game one to Santa's. This winner's final is the best of three. And Santa mm -hmm. went spiders. So now we get into... Game two, which will be on Voyeur's choice of map. Canyon. Yeah, he believes Canyons won't have as many spiders, but Santa might decide otherwise. Ah, no. <laughs> Voyeur knows that themselves. They use spiders against Voyeur Zao. They're going oh, full whoa. on incubator, like incubator and dread sister. I mean, that was that was Voyeur's entire game plan. Yeah, but Santa's saying no, that map doesn't have spiders, so maybe Santa's just saying, Oh, I'm gonna do something mm. different this time. If you're not letting me have Unless they mean that, that map doesn't have spiders yet. Oh, that's true. Not yet. They're coming soon. And they'll be yeah. strong and powerful there. 
Okay. Also, as a reminder, Bloodwell giving Pyre per unit per well was a bug. It should only have ever been... Or a feature. If you're nearby a blood well per unit. Per I call it a feature. Half supply. It was a very fun feature that lasted about one patch because it was broken. It was a bug. It was not intended. You know, sometimes you just don't know the unintended stuff that happens. And I disagree, but okay. It wasn't. It was counter design, but they hadn't mm. thought of it. So they, it's not that they implement anything for that to happen. But yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just it's an easy way to implement. It's like, okay, we'll just code it so you know unit near like for the, from per blood well if units nearby the blood well give pyre as opposed to more of a global thing of if it's nearby any blood well yep but yeah anyhow but yeah just pointing that out that was very much unintended like the, yeah that was very much unintended do not don't think that's just a that's a funny little thing that happened it was never meant to be the case we love those funny little things that do happen. Well, we do, yes. But it's worth noting that they are funny little things and not intended design. Yeah. And that's why we have alphas and betas so we can find it before yes. the real thing. And we yeah, have people yeah, that yeah. love finding them to break them. Oh, yeah. Especially no, we really do, which is great. Specifically in a weekly in a weekly tournament. That is the point, yes. Yeah, I think that's partly why the rules are you don't get to use a broken strategy twice. <laughs> like, if, you haven't, if we haven't thought about it, you can use it once. That seems to be the way things have gone. Yeah, show it off so the devs can see it at least once in a tournament yeah. setting. So it's fun. The devs see it. They're like, oh. But if it's totally busted yeah. and you use it and no one really thought about it before, but we find it's totally busted, then it's like, maybe don't do that again. Yeah, do you see that most do triple damage against buildings and you kill them free shots? Well, you can do that once, but not against... Oh, okay, sure. That would be Actually, a fun one. Maybe. I don't know. It was more like weird No, it was never happened. Yeah. Like, that had never, never happened. happened, by the way. But yeah, like Salvation Delete. Well, there was the Zol killing buildings. Well, doing yes, there was, 20%. which was there for a bit, and then we realized, okay, that's broken. Let's not do that. Yeah. And so, yeah. Or the good old salvation teleport. <laughs> well, delete. salvation delete. Yeah, that that happened once. Oh man, that was that was during trial alpha trials too. Huh? It's like, what do we do about that? It's like, well, I mean, we didn't make a ruling before, so. No it was more. allowed the first time. It was allowed the it first time. It was allowed the first time, but then it kind of worked out anyway because the players agreed, like, okay, we'll get to grand finals, make it an even best of five. No one gets an advantage. Yep. And that was... The players seemed okay with that, but yeah. I gotta find solutions. We're a small community, so we're just gonna find fault. Ooh, okay. Let's find oh, well, small little community being decisions. Very, very forward to this. Looks like they want some defenses right off the bat. Defenses. Like forward Omnivore? Yeah. Oh. I thought it would be to, uh... Okay, Omnivore, right? Oh, well, maybe. Oh, no, Ford! Okay, okay no! That's just... Yeah, that That's makes more sense. Think. You're right. You're right. It makes a lot the more sense. Is, there's a teapot right there. And... Uh, does it, does, it does seize the roadway. It sees the roadway. Yep. So he has an idea. He could have an idea, and the teapot just comes forward and maybe didn't see the roadway. Uh, but either way, if Tilly Nodware wants to go for it, he has to jump on it as fast as he can. Teapots. No, oh, that's a real fight here. I guess also a fight there for the yeah. pirate goes to totally not a warrior. But the teapot battle wow. goes to Santa. The real battle starts. The real <laughs> battle win. The information war goes to Santa, which to be fair, it kind of does. At Boyer point, probably suspects something is up because they just saw Rootway in the middle of what should be their fourth, but they they don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a good attack path, right? You're just going to send Kiddo to that tower forever and <laughs> see what happens. Yeah. Ray opponent. Actually, no, it's going to be Resonance, because you deploy, take advantage of the range boost from being on Rootway, and there you go. Yeah, it's, a, it's going to be both. He's going to do You're everything. Right, it's going to be both. Oh, and the, he's getting another Amber Womb at home, just in case this one dies, so he can always make more spiders. Because that's the scary part, not being able to make spiders. And there's the defenses. So, on top of... But besides this, we're some, or Boy, we're going for a third... Santa. God, they almost could take the base that they're hanging around as a third. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's really well good almost forwards there if they wanted to. It's very well forward. Yeah, it really is. But no, they are they want to get the money. Besides, this does open up a timing. They could push Voyeur on. Yeah, so I was thinking, he's waiting for a few more units so it's harder to attack into. If he goes for the first thing, 
where it can just jump on it before too many come out. But at this point, incubator is even full on energy. Oh, wait, the teapot. Okay. Um, hmm. Teapot wants okay, to get there. There it is. There is the deploy. Take out that tower. Yeah, you don't want you don't want to have towers. You can help it. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter too much for Nautivore. He doesn't need to defend that location. Just are you sure? Because that's a really important joke point. It is, but yeah, if he controls the troll point versus controlling the tower itself, tower is not as important as just defending the upper top of the ramp. Of course, uh, it, it's too late to try and defend it. Mostly, it's just okay. Well, you have that, I guess. Now, it's too bad I can't just defend it. And Sand is going for the next part of the push. I'm kind of surprised he doesn't kill the rocks or reinforcements come faster. Or... No, because that way it's easier for a voyeur to get a counterattack. I think that's what mm. they're thinking. Okay, maybe. All right, right. And Resonance can just siege up there and make it hard to get in. Yeah, exactly. Trying to take out the rocks for a voyeur is going to be impossible. Oh, okay. He's setting up another base. Oh, he's just going to attack from the low ground. Okay, so voyeur is going to have no choice but to attack. Yep. Into the resonance on the blood wells of the extra or on the root ways of the extra range, and with incubators covering them. Yeah, let's see how he deals with this. Uh, Tonover is expecting an attack from the south. He has a teapot to check it out, but nothing is coming in yet. He's about yeah. to see what's happening. Where's, where's the attack? Oh, oh, that's where it is. Oh, that's rude. Mostly, he builds a sentinel in case uh, there's any anti air, but there's none coming at all. <laughs> in case, you know, just. I mean, get through the detector. If, if that comes through, then it makes this upward push harder. That's true. I mean, it's already sure. gotten rid of the reliquary. Monster advisor is about to go soon too. So there's the ability to build soul founder is gone. Counterattack him from Voyeur, but against all the deployed resonance, it's simply not going to get in. And the absorbers are not anyway. here to help. Absorbers not here quite yet to help. And there goes the monastery. Yep. No more soul foundries for you. Not for now, anyway. They're building one back in the back, but. That just delays everything. Santa with the expansion behind this is gradually just pick away at Voyeur's base. At this point, I agree with Santa. You don't need to keep uh, every Voyeur not keeping going with the push. Like, okay, I lost the east side of my base. Not too bad. I did lose the game. I can remake my stuff. I have a faster third base. Yep. And I did lose that many units so far. Absolutely. Ke Voyeur keeping a very level head, which is crucial against any player, but especially against a player like Santa Claus who likes to do tricky shenanigans that knock you off your game if you're not if you're not focusing. I will definitely knock people off their game. <laughs> but I guess the other advantage we, we can mention here is that since... Oh, wow, they will never helping with the fire cap. No. It's just the advantage of having no, an armament with you. faster reinforcements coming in for Santa if you want. Yep. Of course, no. No, just having high ground vision. But Santa was right. There are no spiders in this map. Well, there was there one incubator. There was one incubator at That's some point. That's true. There was one. There was. Oh, there he is. He's still there. There are one incubator and a lot of crabs. Yeah, the crabs are the crabs are the ones that are shooting their projectiles. Their opponent. As he slowly. Well, they were projectiles. Oh, they're right. They're not. You're right. They're just big balls of non-projectile matter that flies. Yeah. Oh, send those using his ability. Nice. Oh, no, it is. I was right. They are projectiles. Okay. That's what I meant. The Sentinels can stop them. Yeah. And here are the Resonance are... Uh, beautiful tanks. Oh, that is really cool interaction, actually. That gives Voyeur a bit of room to get back in here. Yeah. Got to survive against those uh, long-range dis uh, dislodgers. Good old Resonance. Well, as the time has passed, only one Sentinel is not quite enough to defend against this many Resonance. Yeah. Well, stop, wait, stop every shot. a little bit, sort of. Stop it for a while, but... Yeah, it's slowing things down. I mean, Santa Claus cannot push up the hill until that Absolver is down, and the Sentinel, you know, is getting his shields back pretty quick, so it's working out pretty well. Or the tower. What's... Oh, okay, more Sentinels coming. I love this interaction. This is so yeah, it's cool. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Man, very well played by Voyeur here. Building up reinforcements behind this and honestly catching up in terms of both tech and unit count. Any units that need to counter those resonance and I'm not sure if you can get them. Now they come through, the resonance have nothing covering them, only a couple killed from the incubator. Voyeur losing some units in the process. Going back up does kill the absolver ultimately. And the tower will go down soon after. So Voyeur might jump the gun a little bit on that counterattack. Santa Claus pushing in. 
Is this it? This is it. Santa Claus takes the winner's finals. But, man, that was... One hell of a way to finish it. Oh, just, man. Oh, that is that was wrong. That's not the right game at all. My bad. I'm sorry. Hmm. Not many spiders this time around, unfortunately. I love our spiders, but I have to wait for next time to see more yeah. spiders with Santa. Only on Frontiers. Good to mention. Spiders not like yeah. canyons. Okay, there Too we go. That's water. what I was looking for. Yeah, it's pushed back. Oh, this is a little bit late. Ah, well. Hmm. Yeah, trying to jump in, but... Beginning at the very end to just get this units a bit more fire fire. Well, anyway, that is going to be our winner side of the bracket before grand finals. So we're going to have the losers finals with Wajizau rematching against Not a Voyeur. Yeah, those were pretty close matches, so one on one. Let's see who can come out on top this time. Zao or Not a Voyeur. Both, they had a great match last time. Yeah, we'll see how that turns out this time around. Yeah. <laughs> You have one more fight in the loser's bracket. You don't get to eat. I mean, neither do I. Although I had a big breakfast. There you go. That's the I truth. basically have leftover dinner for breakfast when I do casts because I just have to have something that'll last me for like four or five hours. That makes sense. Like a good old... Yeah. Just have a big steak the day before you don't finish it. Oh, there you go. Steak I and mean, potatoes for breakfast. Breakfast steak I've, I've is the that. most important steak of the day. It is. It just keeps you fueled throughout the whole Absolutely. cast. Absolutely. I do love breakfast steak. I should do it more often, but apparently you shouldn't have steak all that often either. Like, you're not supposed to have, like, seven steaks a week or something. Really? Yeah. Apparently it's not great yeah. for you. I was like, When oh, I was man. a kid growing up, seven steaks a week was the minimum. And then I have a steak every day. It's like, what's wrong with you? Are you not feeling well? Are you sick? Yeah, you Maybe can't just make give you a steak to feel better. Yeah, you can't make that mistake again, you know? It's, uh... Hey! It is, you gotta be careful with that. <laughs> Okay, All Santa right. Claus. Oh, so what well, I guess does... we can get Santa. Santa Claus going to be a viewer. Voyeur a might. Well, I don't know. Voyeur might concede to eat. Okay, I'm fine yeah, with no. that. I guess. If Wajiz out agrees to not to just take the win, which Wajiz out versus dispute. Santa, my revenge. Voyeur with with the real mind games. It's like yeah, free win. It's like now run back. You just get a free win. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Forfeiture so, and the run back. Those are the real mind games. Well, why just right. out of the grad finals? Gonna be quite happy with that. Well, I kind of get it from Nonavora, right? He kind of doesn't want to go through to the grad finals because then he'd, it'd be really long. Yeah. So he prefers it this way. He's like, well, if I if I'm not gonna force myself to lose because that would be sucky. It's not just not fun. Not fun for tournaments in general. So better forfeit. Yeah. And try not sense. your best. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like they are really really hungry that makes sense so that's fair actually John, hey, if you had lunch, lunch at like noon confusing. If you had lunch at noon that's nine yeah. hours ago it's a long time ago weird technical question i'm kind of curious what's less confusing if having the scoreboard showing the like three three empty pips for the person has to win three games and two for the person has to win two games or just have a free win but three pips both sides I, I prefer the one one pit. I prefer having the visual of like, yeah, yeah, he has one extra win, so that way it's free free on both sides. Uh, okay. That's what I prefer. I just feel like yes. it doesn't communicate that this is game one. Yeah, I know. And the, there's no perfect system, can I say? No. But I think you're right. I think you're right. This the symmetry does work. Okay, Frontiers, because it is full of spiders. Let's see how White is out deals with spiders. He had some issues with spiders against Voyager earlier. Let's see if he figures out a way to deal with Santa spiders instead. All right, so we are getting the game going. Frontiers. Why is that with their... Are they going to Solar Orzum? Ooh, this is Orzum. not a rhetorical question. Okay. They are they are picking back and forth. Yeah, he's going for Zol, uh, as Zol has been the standard for a while. Yeah. And on Frontiers, where he's lost his games against uh, Not a Voyager. Let's see how it turns out. There, well, it was a pretty close game yeah. as well. It was. It was a very close game. And a lot of it just came down to Zhao being a little bit too quick on the expansion cancel. Yeah. So, you know, if you don't if you don't just throw your expansion away, it usually works yeah. out. You have a better chance at, uh, not the, at not getting the economical deficit from the start. Okay, so... Well, first is a question of whether or not it's even worthwhile. San is going for double ether... Double Ether Alter? I mean, it's usually the way. Yeah, he, he could go for Double Ether into base, but 
Okay, I, I had expected an alter like, to just get that. Do double Ether into base would tell me that you're trying to go for something like Fast Behemoths. Oh, yes. Like some really wonky tech build. The traditional Not... Fat Behemoth. Yeah, there's the altar. Yeah. Completely classic. Well, why just Alex just going for the normal expand after Ether. His ability is playing all tournament, which I, I appreciate. It's like, yeah, do something you know oh, whoops, and make it work as long as you can. Yeah, pretty much. Let's head into the grand final. Santa up. Santa up 1 0. As uh, YJZ has to bring back from lower bracket. They do. Wait, why is. Ah! Yeah, they. <laughs> Okay, everything and, uh, sorted out. There we go. All right. Sad to getting his neural side up and running. We're good. We're always good. We're always happy yeah. to see Santa saw the expansion. He's like, okay, you're doing this. Perfect. You're going to get timing attack. Am I just going to like, yep, timing attack. He's ready for it. Is he going to cancel it again? Because this time he can see that Santa did not go for the expansion. Although the teapot is getting chased away, so he won't be able to teapot his way to victory. No, no. Why does that cannot win this teapot war without a second teapot? Which they have. It's coming, it's coming. But also Santa Claus is not contesting. Yeah, Santa's just like, happy you know, seeing whatever. outside, seeing, okay, you're not seeing yeah, no, it, it's that, out. Perfect. That just, it's hanging out and having a good time. Just happy to be Ooh. here. Okay, Santa this time actually going for the Zakal build. He's not going for the spider build. It was all a trick. He's nope. staying on one base, and I'm not sure why Giselle was able to scout it. Like, his double teapot is coming, but he didn't cancel his base, which he might have done if he knew it was the doubles, mm -hmm. the triple alter is a call build. This is the triple alter, and here comes the teapot. He's even jukes away to ensure he doesn't see it for as long as possible. And Santa's getting ready to throw, to go forward. Teapots. Wait, this guy, oh man, this is dangerous for White Just Now. He needs everything he can to defend this. He gets out of position. Getting that power can help. At least get a bit of power for the fight, get some Zol in there. Uh, but Santa's coming in. Coming in hot. And they are getting that base. Alright. Why does that only a couple couple of units in their base to deal with it? Rest of the forces are coming from the back. Dropping Zol as well. Trying to body block out these a call. Takes out one. Cutting this a call. Quite the Zol reasonably well. Takes out a second Zakal. Yeah, for Zakal's free, actually. Two Zakal. Yeah, two Zakal for free. Yeah, that's decent for Zal. And yeah, the Zal is also a flank great again. Start. Folks are down on this call. Getting baited out, though. Santa pulling back. And Zal's got to be careful about that kind of pullback, Micro. Don't, don't take the bait. He's getting six. Like, it's all about surviving, right? He just has to survive yep. long enough uh, for his calls to come out. And here they are. All the calls are out. Santa wants to concentrate on the base. Will he concentrate on the base or the units? Oh, they're going to concentrate on the base. They want the base dead. They're not even going to focus on losing the call. Okay, now it's now it's dangerous though. Oh, but here comes the red harvest to really help with the fight. Oof. Oh, oh, Zao, you might as well just gone for this call. Like, yes, they get they get killed, but at least you don't lose units in the process. Oh, man. So that's a good one for Santa. Expands behind it, off his uh, pulls a call. Uh, triple altar is a call rush. Goes for the tower next. And there's a call in the process, but that doesn't matter too much as he has a pretty big advantage. Wei Zhao comes in, but too little too late. Well, he had enough to kind of push him back, but too late to really do put a dent into Santa's forces. Santa's trying. And doing really well. Wait, no, I'm saying Santa's trying. Santa's doing a great job here. They got their expansion up. They've got... They have Wei Zhao basically flying blind. Yeah, heading for Master Call at this point. Wei Zhao. You know, it's at this point you have a choice. Do you try to expand and try to win the long game? He is. He went for the other yep. expansion. Or do you just go for a big win here? Okay, hunting around, hoping to catch Santa out of position. Is it going to work? No, Scout goes by without seeing anything, so maybe. So with that, though, it's like, what is that? They're basically surrendering the entire map to Santa. Yeah, that's the real issue right now. It's not a... Yeah. He doesn't and have quite more Red Harvest coming out there. Like, next next fight, Santa's gonna have Red Harvest. So even with... Even coming into the the hunting grounds, Santa's still gonna be able to just turn that into their own advantage. 
Yeah, the Hunting Ground is just going to be get a few extra, a few free kills to begin with, but after that, it's kind of not great. Of course, Santa can think his opponent hasn't expanded. Yep. Don't think he scouted this the special natural. And Santa is just sending a mass hunter out to check every single base to see for those secret bases. Yeah, as as you do, never a bad idea. Yeah, he saw his opponent hadn't expanded. He's like, okay, you didn't expand. Uh, let's check what you're up to. Are you one base? Like, if you're one base yeah, it's attacking like, to you. Expand? Where didn't you expand? Ah, oh. oh, there we go. Finally yep. sees it. Just as it finishes, so Santa's gonna be okay. You just expanded her. I don't have to worry. It's two base versus two base. I can just push in then. You don't. Okay, just, right into just the hunting it. rounds, maybe. Oh, what? No, is that left the hunting grounds? Oh, no. Oh, took the bait on the Masked Hunter. Oof. Completely gave it away. Santa Claus is going to run right into that, and Zell's like, oh, no, i got to take out that one Masked Hunter with my entire army. It's like, no, somebody's got to split up your forces. One Masked Hunter can be taken out, but when's the call? One of those times. Just one of yeah. those times you had to split up, but... And Santa even getting the tower at the forefront, so gets a free healing yep. spot once it goes up. Now, why does Zhao had the perfect hunting ground set up for it? And nope, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, why does Zhao heading for a defensive posture? Pretty big arc here. That is a call of the front. It's very weak though. <laughs> okay, so I like this from Why does Zhao a small risk. If he can survive this, he'll have the extra base. That's how you have to go when you're behind, right? You just take risks and hope your opponent doesn't kill you. It doesn't look great as his opponent seems prime on killing him right now. Santa has a very well, forward that is, position. Well, that is the point of the game. Yeah, that is what yeah. you do. Yeah, but the question is, when do you want to kill him? And Santa seems ready to say, I'm going to kill you soon. I have spiders now. They do have spiders. Okay, yep. let's see. Why did you learn from this lesson? Don't send everything. Did they? Did they? No, they sort of did. Sending one's a call instead. As the rest of the forces do make, take advantage of the hunting grounds, but Santa's army is so much bigger. Gets the surround on Why did you and Wajo Zhao has very little to work with, having just expanded twice. Wajo Zhao's tiny army that San is able to just completely surround. Reinforcements from Zhao are coming in slowly, but, well, honestly, too little too late. Yeah, not surely enough. <laughs> not surely enough. And with that, Santa takes out the natural and the game. Wajo Zhao taps out. It is up. The Santa is up. He's one game away from winning it all. Yep. Just needs the two. There you go. We have game one between Watches Out and Santa, and Santa, or Watches Out, gets the second map. I don't know what they want. Canyon has been a favorite of theirs, so I'm expecting Canyon. But honestly, I have time. no idea. Maybe one last time on Canyon. For old time's sake. For old time's sake. Well, old time's sake would be Lost Province, but maybe <laughs> you right, decide to go for that one. <laughs> or it would be Old Frontiers, but there's no way to access it anymore. Nope, that's gone. Why well, is that pointing on chat that they basically didn't cancel it because they thought they were doing the same thing as Zhao as as Boyer, and Zhao didn't want to make the same mistake and lose the expansion and then they lost the expansion. But you know what? I don't think that was a bad move to not lose to hold the expansion. I think it was just better defense would have done it. Yeah, it was a hard defense, but sometimes yeah, it's like the thing yeah. you go sacrifice a few units so you more units could come out to just basically barely defend it. It's just hard. And mm -hmm. Santa wants to go spider time, but it wasn't spider last time. It was Big Beetle. That's right. Well, it big was all beetle. resonance. And it's saying it's spider time on Canyon of all places where they said there were no spiders. Like I said, the question is, are there spiders yet? <sighs> well, spiders were always coming. They never stop coming and they're always ready to go for a next, for a next attack. Spiders stop com start coming and they don't stop coming. They don't stop coming and don't stop. So potentially the last game of the tournament, but no, we believe in Zhao. He's come back before. He can do it again. Yep. As, uh, games. Yeah, Santa staying as Mala, Zhao staying as all, having a rematch. We, we've seen this quite a few times in the tournament, honestly, Zal versus Mala. It's not a void. Seemed to have uh, played Mala as, as his best immortal, kind of. Here we go. Deep, I'll just go in the long way around, see what's what happening. I think of Santa's best. Honestly, I almost <laughs> thought of Santa as more of an Orzum player, but I don't know. It was a period Santa's... where they were playing a bunch of Orzum. Santa played enough that he's good with everyone. You're right. That's that, true. Like, at the end of the pre-alpha, he was very much Orzum. But since then, he's just played so much of everything. He's competent with all of them. I don't even know if he has a favorite. He's just I've someone that likes... i a lot of Ajari from Santa. Santa just likes wacky stuff, and there's not enough mm -hmm. whack in Ajari, apparently. That's true. Ajari is very straightforward, except for all the teleports and and sh unit saving shenanigans. Yeah, but teleport is back to your own home base. It's not... That's true. You no. Know, 
You need teleports to, to the opponent's base to I be mean, fine. Except, you know, when Salvation didn't have the stasis, you could tell you could Salvation into your opponent's back line and then just have the dead units harass their forces, but that's not a viable option anymore. <laughs> Unfortunately. All the fun features of the game gone because devs want the game to be fair and balanced. Ugh. Actually, it was I think more because Salvation was becoming a suicide run. Like you, you'd use, this, you'd save the units, and then they'd still keep the orders to attack, and it's like, or they just want to go in, or you, you still have them selected, yeah. so you keep, you select them back to attack. Yeah, it's, and not it's like well, you don't want to knock them out of the control group, but you also don't want them to go rush into their death after they just stopped, just got away from it. <laughs> Yeah, death is not the pur death is not the purpose. And yeah. okay, Zell double E for pretty quickly. I said it's still on one. Okay, I course. Well, wait, really? Okay, that's wow. I just I was kind of blanking a bit there because I cores are not what I expect from Santa. So I was like, oh come on, yeah, I core. Wait, murder hollow isn't required for anything except I cores. Mm -hmm. They're just Santa. you just want the murder dogs, just the murder dogs. Yeah, okay. I just figures is Zao gonna go for bone stalking? Yeah, well, you know, Santa I mean, said it was spider time, but wrong. really, there's no spiders here, and uh, you can't yeah. just invent spiders out of nowhere, right? You can't just spawn nope. them out of your amber wound or something. No, no, they don't just exist. Exactly. Hey, so, bone stalkers. Not not a lot of a call yet. So maybe the icors have a chance. Yeah, no, it's a cause at all. Just more Bone Stalkers, which, well, this is going to be a pretty potent push for Santa coming in with those Icors. Santa wants to dish some damage, and that AoE on those Light Units, ooh, man, there's those poor little Bone Stalkers. They don't stand a chance. No, they're dead. Ooh. Nice scout they don't there, know though. it yet. Okay, nice little scout there, sees it. You know, sees a bit of it anyway. Oh man, and the there we go. Coming. Yep. Okay. And I cores. They are going to be getting their splash damage to kill. Yeah. Get focus fired a bit. Yeah, it's a bit of a dance, right? You can. You got to dance with the Icors. Really you gotta make sure damage. that your yeah, ideally your units are in a better concave so they don't get hit by the line. But yeah, that's not. Well, I mean, it's the color big enough. They don't. They don't matter. Yep. This oh. is how it ends. This is how dropping Zol. No, I like and it. Santa that's has no, yeah, yeah, nothing's got. I mean, might as well. Free trophies. Santa can't really contest this. Icarus were able to run away, at least. And Santa didn't get quite the damage he wanted for the Hollow Den. It's, it's not it's not too expensive, but it's not. it stops you from teching up to other stuff you want, like spiders. So uh, Santa behind us might have wanted a bit more damage, but it's okay. He'll just keep going forward. Yeah, exactly. You know, Santa's... They're not... They're not dead. They're just playing it rather risky and not getting a whole lot out of it. Well, the icons are still on the field, and they're they're harassing units in general, right? They're they're heroes that just want to get into base. That was that is the idea about icor. Like that's the thing with icors is that yes, they can deal damage to a bunch of clumped up units, like smaller units, and they deal a bit more damage to lighter units. The, compared to before, it's much less of a difference. But they're primarily for getting around and you know hitting small groups or killing economy lines, that that sort of thing. Yep, and they can be used in an army, but they're not quite the same. They're a bit less cost effective they're also cheaper mind you yep okay finally the altar finishes up so, he, so white as can make some more units but uh yeah they'll come in too late to save ah oh, man no those four symbiotes he's attacking at the front getting the bases while oh, santa's getting the west side oh dear the omnivore just finishes it's just finishes safe. as all the symbiotes die yeah <laughs> well there's quite a few left Oh, that's true, just... but the ones that the ones that were being spawned, I think Zhao might have stopped the production. Yeah, that is, he got at some point. And he's trying to come back in, but it's too little too late. Hikor's no, coming in. The calls are in. Nothing. The calls are the calls are ready. I guess Santa can do some scouting, if nothing else. He can at least know, oh, what is Zhao up to? Not much, actually, it turns out. Yeah, it doesn't even have the God Heart yet, so still stuck on the basic units. As Santa heading for the Amber Room. He could get his spiders out now if you want. And here we go, the first spider yep. on the way. They're mostly the calls. That was a slight advantage right now, though. They could push in. I mean, timing's not great, but it's okay. Unfortunately, again, having lost. Okay, I see. Go for the expansion. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, get after base. Play defensive. Yep, that's a good idea. Get your so, fastest third. See, Santa doesn't have a third. Your opponent's building up an army that 
you can you can contest right now. You can defend it without too much issue. So, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, Sand also going for fruit, but the triangle one instead of the line one. And okay. we'll defend. Oh, that's a big army. That's a big army. That is a Zao. huge army coming in here from Zao. Santa coming through. Zao, a bit of a better concave. Santa looking to push in. Drops the red harvest. But Zao with Zal behind, distracting Santa. And concave coming through for Zao. Zao trying to be careful to avoid killing too much that's in red harvest. Oh, red harvest so is about to expire. And Zal coming around the back on the flank. Santa with a much smaller army means Zao can push in. And push Santa back. Oh man, that, that was such a great fight from YJ Zhao. Yep. He keeps going for it. Uh, well, they're pushing Santa's not on the choke extend. point though. Yeah. Santa's taking full advantage of the choke point they made with the with all these buildings. Zhao cannot do enough damage, can't surround well enough to make it work. And even comes out with a resonant to help defend this position. Which resonant are, are a pretty good solution against all of these uh all of these resonants. That's yeah, I mean, Resonance pretty much have always countered Zakal. As they should. <laughs> yeah, that oh. makes sense. Frontliners should be decent against the slaughters, I guess. Well, zone control the slaughters, they're, they're a bit of a mix of a role. No, but that's still so many units for YJSL. He's really been going for just mass basic units. While well, Santa's been teching up to his spiders. And Bone Canopy coming up. Oh, okay. Air units. Are they going for a quick behemoth then? Might nope. make sense, oh. but I don't know. Don't can't be on both sides. Yeah. Well, anyhow, Santa ready for Rain of Blood if they so choose. Oh, sheesh, that big president. <laughs> That's a big crab, yeah. That is a big crab. Just okay. Blood. Starts blood the fight well. Red the Harvest point? pushing in. Watch this out. Not a whole lot to work with here as Santa Claus pushing around the side, just pushing Watch this out back. Why if they, the if they could get rid of the resonance, they'd be okay. But the resonance is just too far back, and they're not Why even deploying. Why cannot get that hit? Going for the side, gets a flank, but not enough damage in the resonance. Santa able to pull them back, and Santa and gets the base. loses their base. Santa able to push and take the third. Oh man, why did that? Unfortunate fight. He, he just had so many basic units, but those resins at the back just dishing out the pain. And when Joe's coming back, back too. Maybe like don't. <laughs> getting after the other base instead. Yeah, that's probably that's probably wise. Santa going for another push. Yeah, he doesn't need to stop. He still has all three resins still alive, even healed up at the blood. At the another blood well blood healing up. Yeah, Santa can just keep slow pushing off blood wells. Yeah, and behind this, and behind this, he's tacking up. Bone canopy is up. Uh, emote incubator is always coming up. Always Might more well. spiders. But this just isn't a spider map. What can you say? Nope. And now to take out the tower, or just whatever. Prompting watches out to go in the attack. Santa is ready. Watch this out, cannot do any significant damage. That's really the next step. Kalyus from White is out, just going for a counterattack with a small group of units. He has the choke point, he can defend this for a while. It's going to be hard as the residents keep pushing forward as the blood wells come forward. Santa really played this well. Slowly but surely constraining his, his opponent to his one base. He knows it's taking third, he scout with the teapot. Uh, that just might not be enough. However, the counterattack could do some decent damage. Oh, there's an Omnivore, though. Oh. And a Resonance coming up just at that yeah. time. Yeah, well, the Resonance is not deployed. Same type of fight happening the in the point. front. Why is Zhao trying to push to the choke point, but Santa does not care. They have the Resonance on the other side. Why is Zhao can't get through? Santa Claus can't either, but as long as Santa Claus defends their own base, they are they have the advantage. Incubator does go down. Santa from behind with the, bones, with the Mass Hunters, able to take that reasonably well. Same oh. time goes, gets rid of the Underspines. That oh. stops the slow. Opens up the choke point, and Santa has fallen through, breached the choke point. Watch this out, trying to get the surround on this. Again, going around the back for the tech. Gets on an incubator, looking to take out the resonance, but vulnerable to resonance in the process. Even taking out the resonance, why does out doesn't have any army left. Santa able to push through. This natural is gone. Santa's defended their own natural, and watch this out, desperately building reinforcements. 
but this looks like, again, why is that was last stand? Yeah, pulling the Symbiotes as a final attack, as final hurrah, but Rajazel is in trouble right now. He's doing his best, but fortunately for him, it's just a little too just little at this point. Choke point. One choke point after another, trying to Oof. hold it, but it's just eventually, you know, resonant, rootway powered resonant, thanks to the blood wells, means they have the extra range, and that just means Santa can break through whatever Wajazel set up as a defense. And that is Wajazao throwing in the towel for the last time this tournament as Santa takes it 2-0 in the Grand Finals. Or 3-0, I guess, is how we tend to count it, but yeah. Ah, oh, man. Well. Okay, undefeated. Santa completely undefeated this tournament. Yeah, and we have uh, Santa's uh, mother in the chat. Congratulate him on his win as well. So, good uh, job, yeah. Santa, this. Good job, Santa, having uh, won a tournament. And, oh, that's um, true! That is their second 1v1 tournament win. Yeah, and he won an interview, I believe. <laughs> they did, yes, if they won, and they did. So we're going to be getting Santa in for an interview, because I want to ask them some questions about what prompted spiders. Although, to be fair, I actually think that's a really cool approach. Hello, Santa. Hey, Santa, how's it going? Great, how about you? I'm doing well, thank you. I am... Oh, you have a camera. Okay. Yes. I'm... I have to show that. off my crown. I was not prepared for this. Where's the yes. Santa mask? I'm waiting for the Santa mask. <laughs> so, Santa. Spiders. Yes. Spiders. I am full of them. This crown is full of spiders. Oh, that's where that's from. Oh, that's... Seriously, that one book's the entire reason why you're playing incubator-based? Yes. I mean, that, that you fits see, you. You see, here, here's what happened. I went to the store earlier today, you see. I went, so I went to, uh, I went and got 17 kilograms of beans and some eggs, but then I also went to the bookstore and I got myself this book and I've been very excited to read it after the tournament. Okay, so, well, so it's been one what I'm thinking about. Just yeah. for reference, no one can see the book yet. Oh, we'll okay. see it soon. We will see Why it soon. Why is it not working? We'll tell you, we'll let you know. Okay. There we go. We can now see the book. Yeah, it's full of spiders. Yeah, spider. mm. the book is indeed full of spiders. It's in a Santa hat too, somehow. Mm -hmm. Yep, a Santa leopard skin hat. Yeah, that's... yeah, I got it from my grandma. I was gonna say Santa went on some weird adventure sometimes. <laughs> Changed the white of it. Yeah, is that the reason you went for? Because honestly, I do think incubator, like Bloodwell incubator is a really good strategy for Mala in general, but is that why you went for it with this book, or just... Yep. Yeah, that's that's the only reason. Entirely a new strategy. Okay. Actually, and then I realized it was actually pretty good with Resonance. Oh, okay. So how long have you been practicing this? Uh, How long has this tournament been going? Yeah, that's what uh, I thought. That's uh, what I was doing. Four oh, hours no, wait, now? wait, wait, wait. Three wait. Hours? A little bit versus Yeti last night was when I got the idea. Okay. Mm. Yeah, because I was, uh, yeah, was going to go... That's when I got the. I didn't have the book attached to my head yet, but okay. I knew but you had the attached to your head the entire time. Of, time. of course, Santa had it attached to his head the whole time. Uh, of course uh, what am I thinking? You're right. Against I, I took it off against totally not a warrior because I would think I was moving my head a lot, and um, it was falling off a bunch. But for the other ones, yeah. <laughs> voyeur's voyeur's crowning achievement: the one player that got you to take your hat off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, good job, not a warrior. That's the that's the winner's yeah. final, yeah. It's gonna happen. <laughs> okay, I have a question that we asked during the cast. Yes. Are beans a plant, and are they a veg? No, they're lega, they're legume. What was the question, Dom? Yeah, we were not, it was actually nuts, not oh nuts. not beans. Yeah, they're legumes, but are I was right. Plants? I are was right. Nuts are legumes. Okay. Are legumes plants? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, okay, obviously, yes. It's more vegetables, or legumes vegetables was the question. All oh, right, or legumes vegetables. Oh, no, they're legumes. They're their own thing. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's, that's, well, okay. So we're all sorted out. Thank you very much, Santa. Yep. There you mm -hmm. go. That was the important question. There. No, actually, I have yeah. one immortal related. Let's go for that. Um, yeah. So you've been playing a lot of Mala today. Do you have a, yes. a preferred immortal play, immortal with a play style with it? Or do you just kind of randomize depending on the moods? Uh, pretty random lately, because um, I used to, uh, before the rework, you know, I played Orzum pretty consistently. With Dervish. Yeah, you just played Master Dervish. But, 
yeah but then the dervishes got nerfed and then orzin got a lot more tower focused so no i've just kind of been um i've been a, a player without a main i've <laughs> been migrating until soon eventually i will find my main yeah, I'll probably there's, be gonna be, Odai. there's gonna be 15 options at release yeah. there's gonna be like at least six options by the end of the year so you know you're just waiting yep. for decker you're just waiting yeah. for front of decker yeah <laughs> Yep. Uh, actually, that would fit great. You. Yeah. Considering <laughs> it's like all stealth all the time. Yeah, that seems I'll like that. How about sneaky? No. Invisible night of worms. Oh god, is that a thing? Yeah, that's the yeah, that's going to be. You have invisible night of worms. That's his fire. His, that's his fire ability. And his passive, I think, at for a while was whatever the buildings he kills gets him alloy or something. Uh, no, it's um, that's an active ability. It's like the opposite of Empire Unbroken. Oh, it's okay. like he marks it, and the enemy knows it's marked. And I don't know if is it that still takes thing? bonus damage. Mark... Is that still a thing? Because Zul's Mark know. Prey got taken off because it was just kind of a you don't get to fight here anymore ability. And it was know, it's just done. one building. But then there's all the mind games. You know, you can mark it and then go for a completely different part of the map. And right, right, I think it'll yeah. be fun. Yeah. They were all talking about the mind games. It's all about mind games for Decker. Yep. What are mind games? Okay. You dropped the book one too many times. That's the end of the interview. That's how it ends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations on your second one v one tournament win. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's gonna be it. So yeah, thanks for thanks for playing. Thanks, John. Yeah. Thanks for casting. Yep. I can't move my head very much, or else it'll fall off. Nope. All right. Well, <laughs> we will everyone. see you later. Bye-bye. Uh, bye. Goodbye. Right. So that is going to be it for us tonight. So thank you to all of you who joined to play. This was a great tournament that was very well attended. It was very... Everyone played well. And I really, there's a lot of even matches. So great to see that. And other than that... Thank you to Seamus for organizing and handling all the stuff going on in the background so that I didn't have to because it <laughs> makes stuff a lot easier. And thank you to all of you for, or thank you to ZK for commentating and also to Anna for, I guess, being interviewed or he thanked me. I don't know how that works, but nice to have someone interviewed. That's kind of cool sometimes. Yep. Thanks for bringing a webcam to it because that that's Doesn't a nice thing to show off. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I think that's going to be it. So, if you want to check out the game, there is the Immortal Discord linked in chat. If you don't have a key, I I guess I only did the one key today, but there'll be keys in the YouTube video if you're watching on YouTube. Otherwise, that is going to be it. So, you can catch me at here. You can ZK at ZK012. You can see the things. I'm assuming that's just Twitter, but that's also Twitch for you, right, ZK? Probably. I think it's my okay. too. Anyway, simple. other than that, thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone. <laughs>